moment. All right, I hope you can hear me. And I hope the volume is fine. Let me know if I'm too loud or if anybody else is too quiet. Um, yeah. Hello, every ball or hello, every cabbage to our Alabaster Dawn game dev stream. So the pitch is now the first official Alabaster Dawn game dev stream because Alabaster Dawn only existed since, you know, like last week. So that's why I'm for you guys. For you anyway, yeah, it has been in, <laughs> hidden for a longer time already. Anyway, um, I'm Felix, aka Luxon. I will do the development, and with me in the voice chat today are Henne, aka Geflügel, who isn't here right now, and also Stefan, aka Richardson. Hola. All right, and um, the plan for today is to work on dungeon rooms. Um, Yes. Mostly rough layouting and uh, sketching out the layout. I can also give some insight of what the plan is for the dungeon. Um, because um, we are still working on the first dungeon, to be fair, <laughs> to be frank. But uh, not too long ago, I decided I want to change a few things before it's too late. It you might might argue it is already too late, so we have to. Op uh, tweak a few things but I will try to do changes so we don't have to scrap too much stuff um, that was at least the idea um, also we have a music bot before I forget this <coughs> playing the usual stuff and um, then we have a whole lot of viewers right now I think people we may, may have drawn a bit more welcome, attention welcome. since uh, because of the trailer anyway um, so welcome to all the first time viewers um, and also th a special thank you to a bit of babies who subscribed for already 38 months in total uh, saying is it finally the area of post dev stream art again well I'm, I'm, I don't want to make that promise at least not for today it's still a bit tricky for me because it's harder for me to just do like those four or five hour streams that I used to do um, I may have to start earlier if I want to do that. Mm. Um, and then we have like a total of 10 subscriptions gifted by Mark Nefedov. Thank you so much for this generous uh, gifting of subscriptions to a whole bunch of people. And um, then we got... Uh, I think there was something else. Yes, May of such just subscribed uh, with Prime for the 19th month. Saying, the notification is too low, Felix, in OBS. It's too low? Oh, yeah, it's it a double and, and, Yeah. Oh. Well, you, you could see the top. You could see the top of it, but nothing else. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I see what it is. Hmm? All right. I think I just fixed it. It should work right. better now. Yeah, at, so, at some point everything was increased like to a different resolution and I don't know. Anyway, um, May have said what I love about the name Alabaster Dawn is the obvious potential for a sequel named Alabast Dawn and the sequel named Alabastest Dawn. Okay. <laughs> Alabastest. No, no, if, if anything, it's Alabaster d d Dusk. Or alabaster night, you know. Yeah. Or yeah. uh, alabaster blaster, or something alabaster like that. Alabaster <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, alabaster. No, but alabaster is construction material. Barbara, Soviet bank of alabaster and hands of. No, no, no. It is a. It is a type of stone. Yes. <laughs> is that is that a thing and what what's alabaster is in soviet uh some cigarettes or what no uh yeah sounds weird, does it no that's how felix always sounds if it's too loud oh yeah that might be let me actually just tune it down a little bit um, if that's better. The thing is they hear it a bit different than you do, Stefan, because um, it's like um, you hear it through Discord and they hear it through something like the mixing from OBS, which mm -hmm. might be different. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I tuned you on the 
um, mic, mic a little bit, so I hope that helps. Um, okay, so let me see. Uh, Bob9911 said it's kind of we weird seeing Alabaster Dawn game dev instead of Project Terror game on the stream title. I mean, yeah, change, change always has this effect, but <laughs> I'm sure we'll get used to it. Change bad. And I think that's that's all the subscriptions. Oh, oh we have another one by EL2022, obviously, saying I think my sub name just be about to run out. But hey, good timing. My sub may be about to run out. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for all the subscript subscriptions. Um, the audio does sound like it's clipping. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that's more like, like a one? connection Felix's? issue. Felix's? Felix's or mine? Uh... Hmm. I think it's mine because I'm mostly talking. Uh... Okay. So... Let me try a few things. Just one moment. Yeah, it's on maximum. That's always a bit harsh. So let's see how's this. I hope that's a bit. <laughs> okay, it seems to be very loud still. Yo, Pyro, thanks for the. I think the problem with I think the problem with reducing the level in OBS is that it's actually reduced after I have all like the um, filters applied, so it might may not sound as great as good. Um, so if that's still too loud, I can still reduce it a bit further. I have an echo. What the heck? All right. Okay, so how is this? Hello, hello, hello. Okay, maybe that's because my... So maybe this is not better. I turned on the volume of my headset. Is it better now? I don't know, is it better, Chad? It seems seems to be better. If it's still a bit too uh -huh. much, I can still turn it down a bit more. Okay, I will do it a bit more. Yeah. Sounds good now, sounds good now. Better now. All right, all right. Okay. I uh, like a little bit. So. All right. So. All right. I hope that works. Um. All right. So much for audio issues. Um. And um. Right, let's work on Alabaster Dawn. I also have, have to get used to it, calling it that instead of Project Terra, but yeah. Um, I want to work on dungeon rooms. Dungeon. Oh, can you show? Can you show the cursor pointer? Chat. I did a thing this week yep. for the for the game for the gamepad users. What were you doing when Project Terra was killed? Also, Felix is not showing his screen, I think. I'm not. They're right. No, I am. Oh, no, I also forget streaming Felix, in Felix. the actual game that's yeah. streaming. <laughs> yes, you need to because stream. I, because <laughs> I'm not here. I'm not. <laughs> By the way, hi, everyone. I'm a bit late. I'm not very pointly today. But not very I'm pointly, very yeah. German of you. Very unpointly. Okay, now I need to play with Gamepad, and otherwise I'm, you won't be able to I'm see it. I'm still eating something, so I might not be very talkative right now. All right. So look at this. We now have a cursor. It's pointing at the thing. Yeah. Oh, the cursor still hidden by some stuff though. But yeah, I guess this here. That. Oh, one is, which one? Which one was it? It was the uh, skills one, right? The skill yeah, the one, skills yeah. one is the last one I need to do. Mm hmm. This one gets a custom one as well. A little bit more custom. So yeah, we implemented new cursors who look like this and they are only shown currently when you use the gamepad because you notice that uh, with gamepad it's a bit unclear what is currently what was selected and this helps. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I also see the graphics that Thomas did. Nice, nice, looking good. Mm hmm. Pop. Spoiling the dungeon. I spoiled the first puzzle. I'm so sorry. Um. Oh no. Um, I have a question. Is Alabaster Pixel perfect? I mean, no, it, it can't be it because can't. we, we yeah, use 3D can't. projections and you it's inherently impossible to do things pixel perfect if you add 3D to the mix. So, I mean, just looking at stuff here, you will see that it's not pixel perfect. But we try to stay close to it somewhat. Um, but yeah, it will never be perfect, pixel perfect. You get... You get away with surprisingly a lot if you use a more flat shaded style. Yeah. I feel like that was a good choice on our part because like that, you know, even when things get stretched, yeah. it doesn't look too distorted. I mean, to be fair, yeah, it's not impossible. In fact, there is actually a game mode where you do, you can argue it's pixel perfect. Um, That's true, yeah. And that is, but it looks like, you know, it would look like a PlayStation 1 game um, who tried to use 3D. Essentially, you do see the sprites in the right resolution when they're at the right spot at the right zoom level and everything further away gets you know uh, pixels are just lost and it will look odd though it doesn't look that bad to be fair i i think it has a kind of interesting retro feel to it you mean like the old uh, playstation one where when a polygon was there was no anti-aliasing yeah, so yeah, the polygons yeah. always shifted into the pixels. I mean, yeah. yeah. Just look at games like I don't know, Xeno Gears. Um, because Spyro, Spyro is a good example for that. Yeah, Spyro was 3D, but Xeno Gears had you know pixel art characters. Oh, uh, yeah. And it zoomed in and out, and you know everything was. You pixels mm. were just duplicating and just hidden at random and. Grandia. It, yeah, Grandia is another example. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yo. Another subscriber, first time subscriber. Thank you very much. Thank With you. The prime sub. Uh, thanks to Atsuik. Atsuik. I think. So. Okay, let me check. Um, oh, yeah. Some. Since people are new here, maybe I should mention that. Uh, about our game that streams, so I will do the game development here, and uh, people can ask you can ask questions as much as you want, but we may miss the questions. So to increase your chance of um, your question being caught, you might want to use that. add radical fish games or add geflügel, you know, from those or people send, here. Hmm? Or send an Aka Super. Wait, wrong platform. What? Okay. Uh, Aka Super is like Red Super Chat in on youtube like no, the one where uh, you pay 100 no we don't do that <laughs> no no, no, we no don't do that. just ask a question and speaking of that there was a question earlier uh, mm. the question was if there's an inspiration for the name i mean yeah there is a there is a meaning to the name which we obviously won't tell you because i would spoil the game right mm. so <laughs> you have to play it in 10 yep. 20 hundred years whenever we're ready since uh since a bit of bailey is saying look there's diagonal fences that's true but the collision is now better improved to cross codes yes you, you cannot, cannot just do it anymore there. ha <laughs> ha fool it works on both sides that's also yeah Oopala. oh no oh my god is that long time Fan and chat and chat uh, chat user Celio Hogane in chat today. It is. Yeah. It is. Pyro says, "Why don't you do?" It? I mean, yeah, you can use channel points to highlight. You know, if you if you like to do that. Um. Obviously, this is also a good way to make it uh, visible to us, especially to me since I don't have my add-ons installed, so I don't see the radical fish. Mm. Uh, underlines right now. Do we get money from channel points? I don't think so, right? <laughs> I, no. Shame. Shame. <laughs> shame. Yeah, shame for just not g just giving us money for free. Bad business. Okay. 
But it's points, they must be worth something. Okay, so maybe a, a short explanation of what I want to do today is um, I want to work on some of the dungeon rooms and the idea is to make things a little bit more interconnected. That means that uh, right now this dungeon has like a pretty linear layout, like a lot of dungeons in CrossCode 2. And I want to add some kind of ways to give players the option to go back to do some other stuff in some of the former rooms. Um, so I will just start by making this room here bigger and trying to connect it to some of the rooms below here. That's mm. at least the, the plan for now. So we see how that goes. Thank First, you, Siki, for the subscription. Almost four years. That's crazy, man. Four hundred years. That's crazy. Let's do it like this. Okay. No. Okay. Shift map. Genuine question. Do you plan on making a man Juno as a joke is maybe? Mayhaps. But it's not gonna be Manju because that wouldn't be a very good pun now, would it? Hmm. No no no. Best video skin best skin ever made in video game history. Yeah, right? <laughs> very good skin. Skin set. Shout outs to T3 who did all the sprites for that. And the mm. uh, reimagining of all the portrait graphics as well. Oh no, it's not up to date. Oh, no, it's okay. Okay. So, where were you when Project Terra was killed? Was killed. Is this an anime reference? It's a super old um, internet thing reference. Uh -huh. It's a Club Penguin reference, to be honest. Oh, yeah. So, anime, yeah, basically. Is it anime? Yeah, I mean, it might be. I'm not sure. I've never <laughs> actually been to Project, uh, to Project Penguin. Wasn't it an uh, Asian company? I'm not sure. It was like one of those um, virtual chat room thingies like where you had like chat room but also like mini games and no. visual stuff right here in germany we only had knuddles knuddles oh knuddles <laughs> god damn it oh, was knuddles like kind of infamous for like you know things it sure for a lot of catfishing and no. for sure for sure Way back then, there wasn't the, like, ever, the, the internet was still young, you know. Yeah. Well, let's say, broader access to the internet was still young. You know what, what wild? Knuddles? Knuddles. Knuddles apparently still exists, so... I mean, yeah, who also still exists and nobody knows why. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Henning hit me, hitting me with the 20-year-old memes. I mean... <laughs> Might be true, actually. Project Terra is dead. Blame Hannah. God damn it, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> what hell still exists? God damn it. Nowadays, people like hang out in Final Fantasy XIV. That's the virtual shed of. Of today. I mean, it's basically a fashion show plus, you know, virtual simulation. You can build a house in there and everything. It's crazy. Mm. I guess. That was totally me, Celio. If I if I wanted to, um, if I actually knew what Project L and 2XKO actually is, so. 2XKO. It's a fighting game from uh, Riot Games. Ah, ah, that one. Mm -hmm. Man, you always know all those niche nerd things, Stefan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Riot Games, <laughs> or other even. Yeah, that's what I'm known for, that's what I'm known for. <clears throat> I 
does look pretty good. Like, they're basically just in typical Riot Games fashion, you know, they copied a, a style that was already there, right? The, the Guilty Gear style of using, like, a lot of vertex coloring and stuff like that. I'm making it a 2v2, kind of in the same vein as um, Marvel. And uh, what was the Power Rangers game? Oh, Battle of the Grid? Hmm. Or the Grid? Something like that. Well, I know what you mean. How big content-wise do you plan on make Alabaster than in comparison to CrossCode? Very likely smaller. Like the main story, not that much. The main story is like fairly sizable, but there might not be as much side content because let's be honest, CrossCode had a lot of it. <laughs> and we also added more stuff over time, which can still happen during early access and that like. Oh, we have to see. Uh, I yeah. actually think that the story of Alabastodon will be longer compared to CrossCode. It's just it will have <laughs> less side content. Just because of the amount of stuff that's happening, there's actually... Uh, it will be more work in that regard. And a lot of stuff happening, yeah. Short, short game, guys. Short game. Hmm. Smaller game. But then again, the idea that we had, the, I, these ideas are pretty cool, so we kind of want to do them. Yeah. And that's usually how it goes. So. Weird question. Will Juno have darker skin in the full release? Yes. Yeah, we, we won't whitewash her. No. She will have that skin color that you saw see in the game right now. Yeah, not in that weird fucking copied uh, YouTube video where they created an AI generated image of her and whitewashed her. Very cool. I mean, the question is actually if it will be darker, and I don't think it will be darker either. We'll just have this, this same color roughly. Does oh, be... punctuation is important. Okay, now, you can read this two ways. I just mm. noticed. You know, you can read it as implying she should have lighter skin, or does she? Will she have even darker skin? Right. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. You actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wh what do you so. mean? What do you mean, Xanadu? Um. Another question: Does cabbage bean a capybara have anything to do with the? with the Capitara channel in the Discord. And the, I mean, I'm not exactly sure. I think the, the, the channel actually happened, I think around the time when it was already decided that we will have a Capybara. Yeah, I think, I think when we showcased it, right? I think we showcased actually uh, the Capybara yeah. character and that's how the channel happened. So it's not like, like Cabbage was a huge secret. Um, so like some people knew about him. Oh, it might not be, it might be, it might have been before that was a question or something like that. Hmm. I actually don't remember because it was 2021, you know. It was the second one, it was the second one, okay, yeah. But still, but still no, like we, we... We're not gonna like change that color in either way. I think that would be not like we decided not a wise on that. Thing to do. <laughs> yeah, not a wise thing to do. Like you know, just the same as whitewashing a character. Yeah. I think you asked people to send pics of capybaras. Oh, that that might have been the case. Yeah. Any plans for a course code sequel in some way after Alabaster? No, no. No, no, no plans or anything. Certainly no I plans, no. Yeah, we're, we're, well, we are really focused on the game we're currently doing. And trying to like, uh, oh, no. make it the best we can. 
I'm gonna right. have a, have a uh, support mech continue. I mean, like, uh, the, the technology we use, right, is JavaScript and the um, nw.js. Uh, um, what's it called? Engine application interface. Mm -hmm. um, they do support uh, both Linux and Mac, right? So, like, we sure want to do that. Uh, we had some problems with Mac because, like, one of our um, devs is working on a Mac, right? And so there, we had some issues with the WebGL API there, I think. Yeah. But I, I figure this can be ironed out. Well, you know, I like, still need to have a look at it. There, hopefully, yeah. we we'll find like a reason why it's performing so bad. Um, might yeah, be because yeah. uh, Mac uh, is kind of like is not that interested in open 3D standards as far as I understood. Um, but I'm not sure. It might be just a mistake on our side. Um, and in that case, obviously, we can fix it. Okay, cross so. code will never return. Yeah, very likely. I feel like cross code is a like finished story at this point, right? And you, mean um, to you always have to. Hmm? Yeah, for the most part, I would say yeah. I mean, it's it's just um. Anything you you would add sort of needs to compare against what happened in that mm. game, right? And it would be so hard to top it and to like make it a worthy sequel. Personally, I also like new IPs, you know, trying different ideas, um, different like settings and stuff like that. That's I mean, we did, we, huh? No, go on. I mean, I would say, but then again, some players might be interested in what kind of adventures uh, the child of Leia and Emily would have. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I don't know, like that that sounds to me like a Final Fantasy After Years, which definitely was everyone's favorite game. Oh, was it? I've never played it. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Oh man, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's always tough to make these games work. I mean, like, just look at Final Fantasy VII, right? And, or Final Fantasy XIII. Like, was anyone really interested in Final Fantasy XIII 2 or XIII 3? Did, did we really ask for those games? I'm sure I mean... the fans did. I mean, the but first the game was already kind of like. Mm, well. Yeah, it was so weird. It was Square Enix was so high on that. I, I don't. I still don't understand what, what the idea was. Were they trying to redeem themselves, maybe, or I don't know. It was very weird. The whole yeah. thirteen area, the whole ten years, where like there was supposed to be a, like this, like, f f uh, free games. I think right, like, the Agito game, the versus game, and then the normal game. Um. It was such a development hell, right around the PlayStation 3 era, hmm. uh, era, where they had such problems developing, I think, because their engines were basically incapable of developing on these new systems. Yeah, yeah. I think for 13, it was also the fact that this game was originally already created or was developed for PlayStation 2, and then they needed to port everything to PlayStation 3. And way back when, these architectures of consoles weren't the same, right? Whereas now, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, they have the same architecture, right? The same as a PC, basically, uh, which makes porting a lot easier. Um, and also, um, during the PlayStation 2 era, as far as I understood, a lot of the code base um, developers had wasn't stored in some repository. They actually really deleted that because they needed the space, you know? Um, hmm. That's why it was so difficult, for instance, to port Kingdom Hearts to newer uh, um, systems. They just didn't have the code anymore. Uh, hmm. Nowadays, space is cheaper and we don't have that problem, but back then it was a problem. I think for Kingdom Hearts, it was like one developer apparently had the source code that he took home with him, even though he shouldn't have. Uh, so he, we should thank that one developer for still having that code base. Yep. 
Hmm. Toriyama, I think he was called. He was obsessed with lightning. <laughs> he was obsessed with her, but then in the second game, you don't really play her, right? She's, she only comes up as like, Hey, by the way, I also exist. Here's one fight. Now go back to these two characters that... But, that, but, um, then, but then lightning returns. In lightning returns. <laughs> No, this game nice. had cool gameplay. I liked the gameplay in the game, but the story was like, what the fuck, man. Yeah, by the way, I just have like hot news for all of you. Yeah. Geoff Keighley says no Silk Song at Gamescom 2024. Oh. Sorry, guys. Who is no what? Song. What? <laughs> uh, Geoff Keighley said no Silk Song at Gamescom 2024. Too sad, man. That's too man, bad. So unexpected. Like, also. I love the meme, but also let him cook, you know. <laughs> I mean, obviously, obviously. Clearly, they like to develop in privacy. Yo, see, though, I have to say, though, Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth are great. Hmm. Re uh, Rebirth certainly greater than Remake, but still, like. I fairly enjoyed those. But Dirge of Severos, no, that was a weird game. Which basically is also a sequel to the story of Final Fantasy VII. And because I think that was part of why people didn't like it. Because like it added this insane twist to the entire story. Hmm. I wonder if they will be so disappointed. It might be that the Switch 2 is out by the time our game reads it. I would actually say very much so. It's likely, yeah. Like, seeing as it probably coming in the next few years. Maybe not next year, but the year after. I can see Nintendo pulling this off. Because they, they, they need the, the, the console money again, right? Because everyone has a Switch now. Hmm. And un unless they try to pull us uh, DS again and do the new Switch 3D or something. <laughs> it's always hard, a hard sell, especially for like the parents that buy all these consoles for their children. <laughs> Arning, are you planning to add languages other than English and German? We build a system that allows... Uh, us to better translate things. By us, I mean hopefully other people, because translating an RPG is a massive undertaking. Yeah. <clears throat> Basically, how it works is um, it kind of like gets all the um, language IDs and files into a database, and right? then you could technically translate that and then all the language entries will sit in one folder instead of in the assets, right? Because there was a problem in Proscode. All the translations were actually baked into an asset. Hmm. Exactly. So, like, it's like um, you have separate files uh, which add all the all the labels that you need, so you don't need to modify the existing assets. So that that's a big difference. Did you do the German translation yourself? Partially, but we had one person that was primarily like doing large chunks of it. Yeah. Yeah. And they did and a pretty good job. Though, good job. unfortunately, that won't be around for Terra, at least the way it looks right now. So, yep. um, we need to figure out like uh, another way, get some other help. Will have Alabe Will Alabasadon have tutorial skips, long jumps, dash flares, and infinite wave motion beam? Uh, like that's for you guys to find out, right? We usually don't, are not the ones who find out uh, the, the 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 problems or the like skips and stuff like that in the game. Yeah, um, I mean the question is if we let we leave them in, but you cannot long jump anymore. I can say that. Yeah, at least we think you can't long jump. Anymore. Yeah, we have. <laughs> we <laughs> hope you can. Hmm. Yeah. It's just that now you you 
if you attack in the air, right, even if you dash cancel right out of it, um, mm. you won't move forward. I actually tried this in, in, in 10 times slow motion the other day. Uh, you also do like a um, like jump attack, right? There's like a jump attack. Currently it's only implemented for the sword, but you know, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Can you become a playtaster by chance at some point? Well, probably next year when we do early access, right? Then the whole yeah, world is yeah, a playtester. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> What's the general goal time frame for release? I don't even know if I want to say that. I want to like fix on every anything, you know. I'd rather say we want to make the best game. And we'll keep you guys updated, you know, as we always yeah. did and always do. Um, I mean, something we can say, like, even though, like, you you see, like, the, the first area, right, in, in the trailer, you see a little bit of the second area. Uh, large parts of the second areas are already, like, there to play somewhat, right? They need details. Hmm. Uh, there's also a third area already... Uh, mapped out. I'm sure we're gonna change a, a lot about that uh, there as well. In due time. <laughs> yeah, general time frame for release when it's done. Yep, we're gonna, when it's we, done. We're gonna write the Baldur Gate way, write the Larian Studios way. Since Crosscode has Doge memes, will Alabasta have Cheems memes? Cheems memes? I don't know. Um, will it? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Am I too old? I think we all are at this point. <laughs> uh... What kind of memes? Ch Cheems memes? C H E M M S? Where, where, where does it where does it say that? Uh, somewhere. Who was that? Oh, Cheems! Of course, Cheems. I totally know what that is. Totally. Oh, Hannah oh, over here being. Hey guys. Oh, Cheems is that okay? It's a it's a different Doge basically. Ah, it's a Doge okay. with the. It's the Zuma Doge. With the no, um, that makes this very, uh, this face that is a bit. I mean, that's basically the Dory Me, the the Dory Me face, I think. Dor. Dory Me. I didn't know that that that. Uh... <laughs> when Ninja Hobo Connoisseur too. <laughs> <laughs> I posted in Discord, you will uh, recognize that one. It's basically the one that's also used in Dorime. You're thinking I know what Dorime is? Of course you do. What the fuck, man? Where did you post that? Oh, this one. Oh, this one! Yeah, I know this one. But it's not Dorime, that's just like a dog. Right? What's Dorime? Like, is that an anime? Holding mm, the sign for this game. I want you guys to take your time for the four years. Thank you, thank you. We will, we shall create the best we can do. Uh, look in Discord chat again. I, you will be enlightened. Oh. The, the, the choir, the church choir thing. Yes, sorry, me. Da, 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 da. It's actually like a pop song. 
Yeah, it it's doesn't like make one sense. Of those. It's like it's invented uh, language. Yeah, it just it's sounds like, this... like it. Perfect. It's, it's like it's like one of those mystical, mystical vibes kind of genre pop song for for fantasy boomers or something. I don't yeah. know. Understood. Understood. I mean, maybe we will have something like that. You know. Who knows? I think usually we add memes on the spot when we think like this is uh, it's a funny thought. Let's add it. You know. Yeah. Like yeah, but, uh, never underestimate the power of, but it would be funny. Mm. Wouldn't it be funny if and then? Then again, <laughs> that that meme has been a bit too overused and also used for political things. So maybe maybe not in this case. I'm sure some of the memes we have in CrossGuard did have the same. It's yeah, maybe it's true. Like re remember that one time we used that Pepe meme? <laughs> no, we didn't. Mm. It was a joke. Did we? No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been in very bad taste. <laughs> Look, it's a secret door. I added a secret door. 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 Is it secret if we can only exit from it? Uh, deep thoughts with the deep. Yeah, too deep. Too deep for deep me. Deep with the deep. Remember when Gabe appeared in Cross Yeah, I can't I can't believe we got away with this. I mean we just we just have That wasn't their... Gabe though. I mean that was another guy. His name was Yeah, it was another guy. Obviously it was something, another guy. Like... Some some beluga or something. It was, yeah, yeah. It was, it was totally a the... reference. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. 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 Yep, yeah, yeah. Not not Gabe. Any hmm. similarities were purely coincidental. I mean, the the biggest what um, the fuck I got away with it was was much rather the Holiday Man, and the, and this one guest role that's totally not from League of Legends. I just hope they still don't see us. <laughs> I mean, didn't you uh, once talk with someone? Yeah, we didn't talk? we once talk with them? Yeah, with <laughs> one guy, just... and he said like, "Yeah, hey, that's funny." Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this one guy said it was funny, so we are immune from our legal. Obviously, I mean, yeah, it's it clearly works. we're not clearly of siphoning of their money in mm. any shape or form, so they won't contact us. It's not like we made a fan game or anything with their yeah. IP. If you really want a secret door, it can it can't look like a door. A secret door. Uh, hey, no, let's, let's not discuss the nomenclature of secret doors. Yeah, I mean it's not that secret. It's uh, well, yeah, it's it's. I guess it's not a secret door. It's just a, a confusing door that is there, and uh, people wonder, hey, what well, where's what's this door there, and well, how do I get there? And then they, and then they don't know, and they're frustrated, and then they, they stop playing and write negative Steam reviews about how. The all right, all right. So I see confusing. you spiraling. Stop, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some of us uh, are actually in a discussion on the implications of real-life memes existing in CrossCode. Real. Hey guys, is there any reason you changed streaming from YouTube to Twitch? We never streamed we, on YouTube. We never streamed on YouTube. We only uploaded on YouTube. Yeah, we uploaded And I, I just forgot to do that for a longer time. <laughs> I was going to buy LOL, but then I heard Zoe was in CrossCode. Too, so I brought that instead. Yeah, clearly. Like. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly how it went. It goes. Yeah. For most people, <laughs> I think that's how, where most of our sales come from. Surely. Slash yeah. S. Uh, what thoughts are going into this dungeon gameplay design? Into this dungeon's gameplay design? Probably first dungeon. Don't overcomplicate things. Yeah, I'm totally not doing that right now. <laughs> You're making it more organic. You're adding more variation. I mean, the idea is else. to make things a bit more interconnected. That's a plan yeah, here, yeah. Um, because I realized that cross code dungeons sort of feel very linear, and that there's like the path that you go, and you tend to not um, find surprising connections between older rooms and. Uh, the newer ones and so i was 
we're thinking about how what can be done now to kind of like uh, change this a little bit, change things up a little. Mm. For the next one we have that experience, then we can do it from the... Yeah, we can hopefully the... design this uh, from the beginning in, the, in this way. It, it, we can we can do this together, Faith. I think this time you, you did this one alone, right? If I remember you mean correctly. This this design. Oh, I mean, yeah. partly I did the rough design and then uh, Vincent did some puzzles and then I went over those puzzles again. And uh, I think it's also partly because uh, Vincent was involved in the process and I didn't pay too much attention at part where, why it may have ended up in a way which is again too similar to CrossCode. Um, for, for, for the people, Winston's a uh, new member we have. Yeah. A um, level designer. Yeah. It's just. Um, those map polish. It's just <laughs> tricky to could, delegate things. You could say yeah. he is a huge win for our team and worth every cent. Yep. Yes, yes. That was actually, that was actually a really good header. I like that one. Like always, actually. Like always. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. Sure, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's a like a huge help for sure. Mm -hmm. Like. Um, and he and to um, which will uh, make some crosscode fans happy. He had a start with crosscode modding. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really thankful for 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 his help on the maps. Mm. Um, turns out, like uh, like you know, the, like for all those who have played CrossCut, you obviously know how um, how we like increasingly added more details to the levels. Like I would say, peaking in Gaia's Garden, right? Mm -hmm. Gaia's Garden um, was like difficult, especially because we also had those. Um, extra layers for the for the leaf roof thingy. Yeah, really there there cool. was there was a lot of. Um, work in those right mm -hmm. i would still say even the start area maps are more complicated now mm -hmm. because you can play so much more stuff you mm -hmm. know um and we, you can make it so much more detailed and you also have these uh, bigger changes you know you saw those in the trailer where the whole landscape shifts from being like infested by the curse mm -hmm. reverted to nature so every map kind of has a sometimes uh, is two maps in one right Mm -hmm. um, where like a little bit of the pathing through the map will totally change yeah, yeah. as nature yeah. comes back. And um, also sometimes after after certain certain fights and quests, certain aspects could can also change of the map, and that can mm, also sometimes yeah. be rather challenging to um, that to is map true. sometimes. Yeah. There's something I really like already about our game is the 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 um, that you really have these moments where you have like a small smaller infested area, right? And you clear yeah. that area and you leave the map and come back and you see the the change, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it looks really cool. Though I still want to do something that it doesn't happen when you just re-enter quickly. And I actually tried that and it works. Oh, you, yeah. can, you can just make yeah. some plot event and just say whenever you sleep or whenever like time is skipped uh, and then you go back, then it is changed. So that's, yeah, that's very can, easy to do also, that. You just need to connect things with plots. So, okay. This I guess you this really cool feeling of, yeah, yeah, I accomplished something. Here is the visual representation of what I did. Um, yeah, and like Felix came up with a really cool system to make this manageable, in my opinion, relatively easily, right? By simply adding tags to to stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, one of the mm -hmm. one of the first things, major things I implemented after we left the prototype phase, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, because the, the, that that is like one of the big challenges of Project Terra that uh, the world is changing quite a bit. And mm. um, you don't want to recreate maps. That's always like the worst idea. Or at least that's what I my takeaway from CrossCode. Because then you have two maps to keep in sync. And that's always a hassle. So you rather create one map that is that has like um, 
several states so you can quickly compare them and when you modify one thing like everything is adapted accordingly so okay th i think this works a lot better let's see the garden looked magnificent oh thank you thank you okay <laughs> this is this is good i got it i got it that garden that garden got to me oh crazy I remember this, the, most of these maps, right, without the details, I think I did in one cross week, right? Yeah, 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 like, uh, the, <laughs> that, that jungle, <laughs> that was, uh, that was quite a lot, of, mm -hmm. a lot at once. And nowadays I'm more like, oh yeah, one, two, maybe max per day. I do have fun, like, the swamp was really fun. I love playing with the swamp thing, and I had a really cool idea for the swamp, and I'm happy it worked out. Hmm. That's a cool thing when you develop this, like, over time, you, like, think, hmm, you know, what could I add that's unique to this area, maybe, or, like, um, how can we use our systems for something a little bit silly? Then it just works, and you're like, yes! Yes. But look, this is already... I think this is going into a cool direction. So, um, just imagine you're coming through here, solving the puzzle, and then going here, you notice, oh, I can do some platforming here. Um, so you, you jump around, and then you find a hidden entrance back here, which you might not even see in the beginning. I have to, I have to check, but actually... Let me yeah, you don't see it in the beginning. You might see it if you move up a little bit, but some um, you don't see it immediately. And then a little bit exploring. Yeah. Uh, how many devs are working on this? How many Phoenix? Third, fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, including all the freelancers, of course. Fourteen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, about, I would say. Yes. For crosscode, I always... Stock up. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh. like for crosscode, I often set 12, but this includes a lot of people who only helped sometimes. Actually, you can get a very good estimate if you go to our press kit. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me check. Press... So this list should be up to date more or less. So these are most people who are actively in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, pretty close. 15. 15 yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 people are, I would, I would say, are actively working on the game. Yeah, we stocked up a little bit. Uh -huh. Some are essentially just interns who stayed. Yeah. <laughs> Though I'm, I'm already saying ahead of time, this probably will not happen anymore with interns because honestly, yeah. I realize it's just kind of like, it's tricky to manage a larger team. I'm not very good at it. And- um, Stop it, you're doing the best you can. I mean, I try, but it's it's still, it's hard. And it's, it's, it's spent, it takes a lot of time. Mm. Uh, and I would rather do more game dev personally than managing a larger team. Uh, be right back. Mm -hmm. right. What are some other games, if any, you have taken inspiration? A big inspiration for Albastodon, I would say, is a game. I don't know if you heard of it. It's called Crosscode. Um, <laughs> big inspiration for us. That game really like gave us a good idea of what we wanted to do with Albastodon. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah That's the only game. <laughs> I would say that there's like definitely Terranigma. I think the the original pitch when Felix, Flora, and I sat in that kitchen was like, you know, what would be cool, a game inspired by Terranigma. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's pretty much how it started. And everything we discussed then, how it would look and everything, is not there anymore. <laughs> it's not. No. Okay. I think the, the some rough ideas are there. But a lot of it obviously changed, uh, like, which makes sense. Like things change. Yeah, yeah, um, that's not usually how it is. But I think, like, at least the rough idea of the plot is still there. 
I like the the whole story idea. Yeah, that might yeah, that might be yeah. Okay, so Hard here to we talk go. about this, right? We can't talk too much about this, obviously, without spoiling stuff. Hmm. Ah, uh, yes, Crosscode. I remember that game was inspired by Yoshi's Island. It was. It was. It's not wrong to say that. Okay, I It's literally where the map. ball throwing comes from. Yeah, yeah, it is, definitely. <laughs> 80 hours into crosscode and counting. So glad I found out about you guys. Thank you, thank you. Have fun with the game. Okay. You mean the tower defense game with manual aiming? On an invulnerable tower? Yes, man. <laughs> that was a cool mini game. Will you guys use things like TikTok and YouTube shorts to try promoting Alabastodon? <laughs> I mean, we totally do have a TikTok account now. We have TikTok. YouTube Shorts, I don't think we have. Them. Actually, I was we'll I was actually them. planning on doing that. I just forgot. I probably oh, should yeah. just make a... We do have a short version of our trail, like a, and like a 9 to 16 aspect ratio. A vertical video version. version. A vertical version of the video, yeah. Uh, talking about Cross and the famous real-time strategy action platformer. Yeah, well, we're Kojima naming our games now. Crosscode, tactical action strategy game. Advanced tactical strategies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did anyone play it super micro heavy? Like switching party members regularly to try and keep as many ma enemies standard? Huh? What? Anyway, who oh, Secret of Mana. In Secret of Mana. It's been so long since mm. I played Secret of Mana last time. What I did mostly was like I'd, I leveled all the elements and then did the hope for the best that I triggered a special version of it. We actually playing currently Secret of Mana in our office still again. So, um, <laughs> and it's uh, well, the combat system really is weird at times. <laughs> like the, the whole way, um, how you just sometimes attack things and they just don't hit, and you have no idea why. Like it, the game is not very transparent in that sense. Um, like um, there's still like it's still kind of fun, but it's. Like, um, it gets really chaotic, especially like the boss enemies, even though, I mean, it's not really chaotic because the game is actually quite slow in many ways, which is actually something I liked about it, that it's not too fast. So you can, it's actually, you, you still kind of can follow what's happening when you play it with three people. So it's not like a huge mess and everything, but still like, um, just hitting things and you don't know if you hit them or you don't hit them um this whole charging your weapon all the time the irony is that charging very often actually makes sense because the game is designed in a way that you very often have to wait before you can attack anyway so you might as well be charging a weapon so it's not like it's a bad strategy it's actually the game is kind of designed around that i feel mm -hmm. um but it's yeah like, it really didn't age perfectly in that sense, by no means. But the music is still great, though. I think the music, the music still works. Still, uh, still works really well. That. Yeah. So here, that's what I'm going to do. There's like a, a secret room here, and then you see a treasure chest, but you cannot get there. So you have to go from the above. And, oh, you're blue balling. Yeah. yeah. The player. I'm doing, gonna do that. Have you guys played Octopath Traveler? Probably one of the best J. Who? I, uh, I will not comment on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have not played okay. it. I will not further comment on this. This is bait for me. No. <laughs> uh, to be fair, <laughs> I, I didn't play Octopath Traveler. I played the demo version and I. 
decided it's not for me because I didn't really didn't like the the writing. The writing was was like I don't know, it was it was not enjoyable at all for me. I did play Triangular Strategy, which still didn't have really good writing, but somehow I still played it through because I actually kind of enjoyed the gameplay. Um but um yeah, I didn't play really play Octopus Traveler. Which content will be will there be compared to cross code including past game? Likely less, likely more. We shall see in the future. It's hard to say. Hard. It's hard to say. Um that also depends on how long we you will let us develop and <laughs> how long we can afford <laughs> yeah. to develop. That is, that's, that's part true, of yeah. uh, part of uh, what makes a difference. Like side content is always like okay, we we can add mm. more if we have more time. You know, those mm. are always fun. Obviously, like sometimes we come up with really cool uh, side content ideas. Um, like like all the all the uh, crazy quests handed it. You know. Yes, yeah. That's me. I'm back. Um, Hi, Hannah. Hello. Felix, I have, a, I have bad news for you, but I will uh, tell it after Stefan is done. Oh, no. no, no, go ahead. I was done praising you. Okay. Wow, that's... I don't <laughs> think you can... <laughs> Nothing um, more to do here. Damn it. <laughs> My job here is done. Felix, <laughs> I ate so much, or rather I made so little, that I won't be able to bring any warm, warm food to the office. So we will No, be we will starve tomorrow. Okay. Oh, no. It's decided. <laughs> I can't. I have, can't afford to f food on my own, Hannah. I'm relying on your food. You know right. that. What are you doing? We are, we are poor. We are poor in the <laughs> We have to sustain ourselves on bread and water soup. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, bread and water, water soup. soup. Oh that's my gosh. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like that's, the, the dungeon meshy soup. That, that's a that's a reference. There is this weird Twitter account who whose whole existence currently is about uh, posting videos of that weird game that apparently nobody knew about or like few people knew about, and now it's it's going viral, viral yeah, to some it's extent. Like, it, it's like some some mecha game basically, some where you where, where you play a guy who psychically. Uh, uh, controls a giant robot or something, and it has like so many funny characters. What is it? Like, robot very... Alchemic Drive, that's the name, right? Yeah, yeah, right, Robot Alchemic Drive, and it has so many funny uh, cutscenes, and especially this one girl who has like, whose entire existence seems to be like pain, like because, okay, I think it she, kind suffers. Of <laughs> she suffers. She suffers, I think it kind of depends on player choice, or rather how the player does in the missions, because Potentially, you can apparently um, uh, cause the destruction of her home, then of her wor workplace, then of her grandmother, then of some trinket that is the m m memento of the grandmother, then another <laughs> workplace. <laughs> Should you like you destroy every last piece of hope she has in her life, essentially? And she, yeah, and but she excellent. kind of uh, yeah, like uh, the the game also has like ridiculously bad voice acting. It's so bad yeah. you actually think it's AI generated, but it was so old. I don't actually think it was AI generated. Yeah, no, no, it's, it, it wasn't. It's um, but it sounds like it's AI generated. It's really weird. <laughs> Oh, this, I also like this one. This one cutscene with this um, assistant girl who um, yeah. was like, "Oh, you destroyed uh, my condo, but it's not a big deal." And then she spends like the next five minutes explaining you stuff and, and constantly reminding you how it's totally not a big deal that you destroyed like, her and condo. And how she's very <laughs> proud of you, and it just really gets <laughs> off in a very passive-aggressive way. Like, oh, okay, I, I get it. I destroyed your condo. I'm sorry. And like, no, it's no big deal. Thank you so much for saving the city. I will sleep here tonight. And then she suddenly changes her expression at the end. Yeah, so I'm going really to try to. I'm going to try to find. The, oh yeah, there's the account. The account is uh, Regality, right? Read Regality. I, th I think it's something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I have like one of the. Oh yeah, there's a passive. <laughs> I'm going to post them. Um, Mm -hmm. Will there be native or... Linux support, or do we have to rely on Proton? Um, um, you all, we can't really say anything about it, but like since the systems we use are able to port to both Mac and Linux, chances are pretty 
good, just like cross code. Yeah. If um, okay. Chrome with if MWJS uh, supports WebGL in a good way on Linux, then probably yes. Um, we don't have none of our team members have Linux, so. <laughs> yeah, at some point we're gonna have to <laughs> see how we can test this. Yeah. I so can that, test it on Steam uh, on 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 the Steam Deck, but I think that one uses Proton, right? Uh, you can use native Linux versions there too. And in fact, uh, Crossco runs better in native Linux on the Steam Deck. Yeah, I can't yeah, find it. I can't find but then it. I can at least t test it on the Steam Deck. I can't find the bread and water soup one. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I, I got it. I got it. Oh, um, this game! I played this game. Really? You played this game? Yeah, wow. I played this game. I'm pretty sure I played this game on emulator with, uh, with Bjorn. Oh damn! Okay. Yes, I remember this girl with the yellow jacket. Absolutely. Yeah, like she she was always uh, only shit happened to her. I mean, at least there's an, a route where only shit happens to her. Yeah, I'm gonna. Eating? I'm gonna post like three of the videos for her because it's just fucking funny. What kind of soup? What's in it? <laughs> this freaking voice acting is so. Yeah. <laughs> oh my freaking god. Yeah. The good bread and water soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's basically how we have to sustain ourselves by doing game dev. Yeah, yeah, that's what we have to do. <clears throat> red, I remember red. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually nice. I'm gonna just off this like so there's like there's no way to get through here. There's just a chest here. You go there, collect the chest, and you go back. Because it's it's actually longer going down here, tracking back than just going backwards. Um Early voice acting in video games was a treasure to behold. <laughs> I guess, I mean, yeah. Justin, Justin, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then the random German uh, videos. So, Grandia was the greatest in Germany. It was like oh, yes. um, German videos, like the the, the, the vaults that were in the game, right? Those mm. were in German, but mm. the but voice were... acting was in English. Yeah, yeah, the, right. The, the rest of the voice acting was in English. And the English voice acting was mostly pretty good, but the German voice acting was pretty much like... Oh, yeah, the oh, German voice acting. Uh, uh, um, because, because the German voice acting was only like four or five lines, maybe, or the entire game. So I guess they just took some random kids of some office worker who worked on translation or something. And the translation... I mean, it was... It was a pretty early. Yeah, yeah, and the tr the German translation was also not very good because um, you had a lot of like very li literal translation. Like for example, um, counter, like you are countering someone, was translated as Zela, like counting <laughs> down. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I remember. And, oh my gosh! Yes. And there oh. were other examples, but it was of course not as hilarious as the uh, remake translation that Grandia 2 got with uh, Miss being translated as Fräulein. <laughs> oh yeah, which is like lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh um, my gosh. So whatever uh, you... I mean, they, 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 um, they apparently changed that, but, uh, but the translation was still not very good from what I heard. Uh, I've been wanting to make a game similar to CrossCut. I was wondering, is CrossCut made in 3D with fixed cameras? It's simply isometric into the giving the illusion of 3D. No, it's actually completely 2D. Yeah, yeah we don't um, use 3D rendering in CrossCut, actually. Yeah, it, it like, uh, if I remember correctly, you, you, you rendered things twice, right? When they, Not just like, twice. I mean, what do you mean, splice? I mean, I do render things you mean when they're blinking or like um when they're, when they're intersecting yeah uh, yeah like um i do render entities in slices if they are overlapping through different layers so for instance you do have certain layer heights that you can jump on usually every two tiles in crosscode 
and uh, entities are sometimes split up and rendered between those layers so things work correctly. That's one thing and another thing is that just the way of sorting entities was was essentially just black magic. I mean, I'm I'm not <laughs> sure I could uh, recreate that today. Um, it was black black magic. It was really weird. This algorithm. Felix sold his soul to to make this work, basically. Yeah. It was really um, yeah. I'm actually quite happy uh, overall working with WebGL. It makes a lot of things more <laughs> sane. <laughs> That's true. Ah. Uh, Sometimes it can also make things unsane. I mean, scenario. sometimes it's also annoying, you know, dealing with death buffers and uh, mm. Z fighting, all that bullshit. So we didn't have this issue oh, in Crosscode. But Flora Cross subscribed for the funny number. Oh, hi. Hi, hi, Flora. Nice. Congratulations That's for the so funny nice. number. That's so very nice. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Sorry, go ahead, Phoenix. No, I mean, that's... Yeah, you don't have Z-fighting in crosscode, but then sometimes things were just rendered in the wrong order. You know, like those pipes in uh, in Vermilion Wasteland, where you, sometimes you would just render up behind them, and that I at some point mm. I just said, screw it, like, I'm not going to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever that? considered including co-op? I, I, personally, I don't. Like, I think we never talked about it. Co-op in uh, Terra or...? It doesn't say. Like... I'm personally not a big fan of RPGs that are co-op. I like my solo experiences. Yeah. Um, I also think that it's a design nightmare, balance-wise. Yeah. Uh, especially if you want to have things like parry, stuns, you know, status effects and stuff like that. Um, mm. You can actually see how, how easy this becomes a sort of uh, just timing based event. If you have ever played a um, MMO, right, and you go into a raid where you have like eight people fighting the same monster, you often you often see that the only way to balance that is to make the monster do all the things it can do without ever getting stunned. You just evade, stand, and spam everything you got in a certain rotation all the time. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I really like the solo experience where you can say, oh, I can evade, you know, you can use the space yourself and you always have this one on one kind of thing going on. Mm. I'm trying to think if there is like a, a game that was balanced around two clients. I, I remember there's a, a Souls like that recently is in development, a co op version of that. I wonder how, how they like make that work. Because whenever I play like any Souls like with with someone like Dark Souls, it's always much much easier. Hmm. Which I think is by design in those games because playing them alone can be quite um, quite challenging. Yeah. When yep. you I see then how were level hitboxes handled when the character is changing height. Does it use hitboxes per layer? Oh, level hitboxes was handled when carry changing height. Does it use hitboxes per layer or does it detect then? The thing is, the collision is actually fully 3D. Um, it's just that the rendering isn't. Um, like internally, character have three dimensional positions and the hitboxes are have three dimensions as well. So they have an X, Y, and Z size. Um, and tiles also, there's also like some tile collision and it's kind of mixed in, but in the end, most things in CrossCode are three dimensional except for the way things are rendered. And we just uh, use some very weird algorithm to make the rendering work. Um, that's also why for Project Terra, we could essentially just reuse more or less the same physics engine we had in Crossco. We just improved a few things, but uh, I would say 90% is the same engine. That's why also the collision will feel similar, I think, in, in Project Terra. <clears throat> I 
What are your favorite JRPGs? Neo 2. Uh, Easy. Neo Profile is Maybe. Uh, this is good, but have you ever heard of Neo 2? Um, no, you've only told me about that like mm -hmm. every second. Uh, design, okay, let me, let me tell you about it. So Nier 2 is an um, action RPG. It's not oh, a JRPG, is it? A... <laughs> huh? it's, it's not really a JRPG, isn't it? Uh, it's a RPG made in Japan. Oh, come on, jeez. I, I mean, that, that's like... It has a story. That Dark Souls is a JRPG, and I, I, I will not agree that Dark Souls is a JRPG. Come on, it's like... <laughs> I also think that CrossCode is more of a JRPG than Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls, I mean, really. Even though it's not made in Japan. I mean, it's about like the kind of RPG experience you try to capture, right? Um, anyway, uh, Neo 2, guys. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a very it's a, good it's game. A good you should game. all play it. I heard. Uh, and please make sure to tell Team Ninja that they sh should stop making games with quantity instead of quality. Because what the fuck was Way of the Ronin? Or Ronin yeah. Ray? I don't know. I mean, what was it? It wasn't. It was. It is Assassin's Creed. No, it is Ghost of Tsushima. No, Ghost of Tsushima. 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 Ghost of Tsushima. But not good. Eh. Cool. Cool. Um. Um. Transmogging system, though. Very cool transmogging. Very mm -hmm. very cool animations, but very bad gameplay. Okay. But yeah, what are your favorite JRPGs? Honestly, um. Uh, I have to think. Big... I mean, Weren't I did like big... I did like Valkyrie Profile, even though it was weird in many ways. But it was was a very mm -hmm. cool game. Um, I think for me, it's Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is pretty good too, especially gameplay game wise. wise. I was yeah. never a big fan of the story, even for the first games. Um, Felix, uh, you were a huge fan of Final Fantasy XIII, I think. No. <laughs> Honestly, to some extent, I did like the combat and the gameplay mm -hmm. to some extent, but the story was just horrible. I mean, honestly, I don't know. Maybe that's just because I played it recently, but I have to say 5.7 Rebirth is really pretty damn good. Like, oh, oh, yeah, you're right. Actually, in, yeah, even though, I mean, I, I do like Chrono Trigger was an amazing game and everything. But I have to just, just say, like, 37 Rebirth is really, really, really good in so many ways. I mean, obviously, it's the old story. Story is kind of dorky and everything, but everything else... Like, That's what the, I love about it. I mean, the story is actually fun to play. Like, it's it's yeah. um it's fun to experience because the characters and the writing is good. Because Square Enix suddenly can do good writing again, in my opinion. And also... The gameplay and the way they made everything is just is just really really good. Where I really have to think, man, this might actually be one of my favorite JRPGs. Even though I have to admit I didn't play it fully, I'm still stuck in Cosmo Canyon because I couldn't play it recently that much. Dun, 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 dun. Um, but yeah, it's uh, what 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 are my favorite JRPGs otherwise? Like, uh, when it comes to story, uh, Xenogears had a very big impact on me back then. Though it's like a really long time ago, so it's a bit hard to judge now. Mm. If it was actually that good. Um, mm. Neo Automata is also good, though I feel like it falls flat on the gameplay variation and the side quests do also fall flat a little bit. Because they are very fetchy in nature. If you're not focused on the story in 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 near automata, then you will likely not feel it's a round experience. Still, a great story. Hmm. Persona games. Persona is always a little bit like, like. It is what you know, and it's always good, you know, but it's nothing extraordinary, though Persona 5 had a real cool cool presentation. Mm. And I actually liked the beginning of Persona 5, but then they went to JRPG in, in the second part of the game, and that, like, turned me off. I actually stopped playing and watched the rest on YouTube, because I felt my, it wasn't worth my time. <laughs> At that point, you you sell all the cool menus, you know. And but I'm looking forward to their fantasy 
uh, fantasy sonar game. Metaphor. Metaphor? Metaphor. Um, mm. Where I'm, I'm more inclined to, um, like, oh yeah, here you can go all the way to JRPG because, like, you build this world where it's, like, it looks from the trailers already like you're building a bigger scenario. Um, and also there are quick fights now, which I... Thank you. Thank you, finally. <laughs> it's like uh, pers playing Persona is like playing Dragon Quest for me. I love it, you know? Even though it's always the same, but it has a certain charm to it that I really enjoy. I only play Persona 3, but I didn't get that far because it was too dungeon crawler esque to oh, me yeah. somehow. The and also, one, like uh, something yeah. messed up, and I lost my save data actually. <laughs> so uh, I think that's yeah. What the third happened. one was pretty crawly still, and I think that you couldn't control your party members in this one, right? Yeah, I think it was some. You couldn't. I, I don't, I'm not not sure. I think I like you could them, so give them suggestions or something. I but you couldn't tell them exactly what they should do every time. Mm. I sadly never finished the third one because I, I only got it through like a uh, four weekend. Hmm. I finished four. So that's that. There actually so many JRPGs that are good, you know, that, that I think inspired us, you know, there's obviously also Xenoblade. Um, yeah, actually, that's that's what I wanted to say. Xenoblade is, I mean, specifically the first one. I wasn't that big of a fan for the second one, but I never played it to the end. And I never played the third one, but I did like the first one a lot. That might actually also be one of my favorite JRPGs, if I think about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Single play it was definitely, especially when it came out, it was like uh, quite a big deal in my opinion. Because yeah, even, especially after playing Final Fantasy XII and XIII, who both had such uninspiring level design, and then Xenoblade, the first one, was so unexpectedly amazing, really. It was even like, like it was also really surprising that we actually got this one in Europe, uh, in Europe but America it didn't get this one at first. That that was like a surprising twist. Yeah, it was. I think it was because Nintendo like uh, RPGs didn't sell well in yeah. JRPGs, and so there, there was this like thing Operation Rainfall, right? Mm. It was like Xenoblade Last, no, not Last Story. <laughs> what was the game? Uh, was it White Knight Chronicles? No, 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 no. It was. It was free. <laughs> Run Cut Eleven asked. Ron Card 11 asks, how did you decide on fun animation for the trailer? Uh, we decided because he sits in our office. Um, <laughs> he's right there yeah. at our office. So that we actually, I mean, he also did the animation for the CrossCode trailer back then. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So we just know him and we know we can work with him well. And so he did the CrossCode animation, uh, the Yellow Bastardon trailer animation. Yeah. I mean, we, we do have a shared co uh, office space and he's just uh, also there working on all kind of projects, really. How... Uh, what was the question? Will Alabasterdon have safe game backup with text? And there will be backups, just like CrossCode, but it, this time I think there are two backups per safe slot. And yeah. Also, more importantly, there's like one file per safe. Yeah, CrossCode one file. Had like Crosco had like one, um, one big file for everything, and if that one was broken, everything was gone. Yeah. So I think having more files will help. You also and and the system there's also the system file that's separate, that has like two fallbacks, yeah. if one should break. And it's all this time not a text string that's encoded something. It's all just bare text, so you could theoretically edit it if you like. Hmm. <clears throat> Are there any new major systems like puzzle? I mean, yeah, there's like 
all new puzzle elements, all new systems. This is a totally new game, so... Um, like we said in, in the trailer material, in the release material, like, there's, like... There's going to be eight weapons, four elements, every weapon has, like, combat arts that you can execute with, like, holding the button or delaying the button. Um, there's going to be, um, divine arts, which are, like, the combat arts of Crosscode to confuse everyone. Uh, but they are more, like, big spell attacks, you know? Um, there's, like, gems that you slot into your weapon or into your core. There's, mm -hmm. like, a skill tree for your core and every weapon. There's a progression system for 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 different communities. Um, there's gem crafting, gem upgrading. Uh, there's cooking. Mm. That's balanced around the idea of you don't need to hoard your items, you know, so you don't have like a large list of items that you scroll through. Every time you will have a maximum of um, three different boosts with you. Um, and one heal item that you always have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, more, obviously. A lot of systems, and we really dug into those uh, balance balance sheets and all that stuff. Oh man, yeah, like, we didn't even do a lot of playtesting yet, so that that's yeah, no, something. No. Yeah, well, like I feel like in, when something in theory already looks. Um, fairly decent i think well when people will eventually play and say like oh this is pretty strong or this is pretty weak you know we will increase the values you know it's yeah it's yeah simple. i mean i'm actually i'm a big fan of uh calculating things and not going by you know gut feeling it's not, like i'm not a fan of that because it usually goes wrong when you do that um so everything is aligned with a curve in project Terra. it was similar in crosscode to be honest though it wasn't as precise as crosscode uh, as a lebesadon mm -hmm. like as a person we really try to uh i try to make the end results follow like the final stats to follow a certain curve and uh yeah i hope that that works out well um yeah i mean i'm mostly curious about how the whole food system will be received because this will and i think we might still need to balance a few things there but yeah i'm, I'm mostly curious how that will play out um There's a lot of uh, JRPG discussion here, and uh, Mr. Happy Ham said that uh, his hangups are mostly or there is about the stories, mostly good, but always have some weird bullshit it does when it gets bored. Combat. Um, I mean, to be honest, my experience with JRPGs is a bit like that as well. That uh, JRPGs they tend to have cool, interesting stories. They have a focus on the story, and at some point they just go insane. <laughs> because then, then they kind of like, okay, now something crazy needs to happen. Now we need to kill, have to kill God or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we and have that, to that, kill God. <laughs> and you know, like I guess, I guess it can be fun, but at some point, I mean, to be fair, to be to be frank, that's exactly what I wanted to try to avoid in Crosscode. That it's, I mean, you do literally fight a God, but it's framed in a context where it actually makes a bit more sense, you know the whole oh it's, it's a game inside a game thing and it's also really designed on this like you can beat it you know like in law it's designed to you can beat yeah, it. yeah i mean that's idea. that's like putting things on it's a little bit lazy to be fair though i mean just saying oh it's no, a no, game it's not lazy it's completely smart Felix. okay yeah i mean Ahem. if you think so <laughs> anyway um <laughs> but yeah like um i always feel like sometimes i wish that you know these kind of stories would be a bit more grounded that they kind of like uh because you can you can make a lot of really cool stories and you don't need to get you don't need to make it about the whole world and everything explodes and then there's like a huge god and you have those weird those weird things happening where you don't you're not exactly sure how it's supposed to work and then it gets really dreamlike and weird and you don't know exactly what is real and what isn't. And I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, it's also kind of like 5e16 had this, you know, 5e16, it kind of like it had this whole premise. Oh, it's like, you know, Game of Thrones. 
and it's more you know would think oh it's made probably more down on earth like bullshit it's not it's like it's the same we let's fight god story like every final fantasy has it <laughs> and it's you know to be to be uh, to their credit again i mean square enix somehow learned to, again to make good writing because as i hated 5 is 16 because like the dialogues and the characters were so, like a huge pain and you mean 13 13 sorry but 16 yeah. The characters were actually fun, in my opinion. I actually liked it. Um, at least, um, at least it wasn't bad. It was like pleasant enough to, to uh, follow the dialogues and everything. And same five five uses five, seven. This like the seven remake and reverse. It's the same story again. Like, I don't know. I I'm, I don't really take the story that serious because I'm expecting it to go into a really weird direction again, as they always do. But you know. If the journey is fun enough, it's fine, you know, if um, if the characters work and there's a lot of fun scenes in between, um, then that's enough enjoyment in my opinion. But yeah, sometimes sometimes I do wish... Uh, um, because even Xenoblade does that to some extent, I feel. That, um, I mean, yeah, the, the Xenoblade builds up to that as well. Yeah, it builds up. I mean, I only know, really know the first game story, but it had like this thing of, okay, it, I guess it kind of makes sense, but in the end it has like this weird, this, those huge implications that, you know, you can just throw those on top of every story if you want to. <laughs> this kind of like, it doesn't feel like um, it all is nicely connected. It feels like it's it's like this huge twist, but it's like, it doesn't really feel all that clever. At least that that's the, my opinion on it. Now, Xeno Gears, again, like I played it a long, long time ago, but I like recent sometimes I got into the mood and looked into how that story actually looked like. And it's actually it's kind of crazy how how huge that story was and how deep they planned like the whole thing. Uh, and how everything is kind of like connected in a weird way and that, uh, to this day I still find this impressive. Um, the thing is just that Xenogears is really unfinished and the game towards the end is just like a collection of of weird cutscenes and some fragments of gameplay. So it's really like because it was just way too ambitious for, for its own good or something. But like I still find like the whole world building the story that planned back then quite uh um how you say i forgot the right word like i found it quite uh interesting like it i, I kind of feel like it's not it doesn't fall into this whole oh let's just do whatever towards towards the end like it kind of like feels like everything is kind of explained in an interesting way at least i, I thought that Hmm. Interesting. I disagree. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't Why? know. Maybe. No, because. <laughs> Rotation needed. No. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's it's funny that um, Monolith basically, with Xenoblade 3 releasing, is the first time they actually finished their story, right? Because Xenogears mm. is sort of like they needed to put it into a movie, right? And as far as I remember, they wanted to do more of that as well. Then Wait, the movie? Saga, the second, the second CD was basically just a movie. Right? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like even then, it wasn't finished. And there's like actually a book called Perfect Works. You know, very humble. Um, and they, yeah, they, they, they used they, that term for 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 a lot of these things, though. Yeah, and they just, just explained. They explained like all, everything they planned, and it's, it's it's quite interesting to read that. Um, the same is true for Xenos uh, Saga, right? Where probably, there was like yeah. a whole three more games planned that would like um, um, have like the whole um, what did they call it in game? The 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 mother world, searching for the mother world or whatever. Hmm. Um, I still think Xenos Saga also has like it's really well thought out, like. Everything fits well in the end, you know. Mm. Like when you play the third game, you can feel like okay, yeah, everything established in the first game. They actually have a lot of flashbacks from the first game 
um, using the assets from the first game. Oh. <laughs> okay. Which is in stark contrast to the much better graphics in the third game, right? The third game is like on par with like late PlayStation 2 games, right? It looks actually really good. If you emulate it nowadays, it looks really, really good. Hmm. Um, I just wish we, we could have gotten more out of that as well. Um, I wish, I, I really like, p just what I want from Monolith, please do not do a Xenoblade 2 again. Like, for the love of God. You mean in, in style and stuff? In style, like, whoever wrote this main character and whoever approved that, like, come on, man. Mm, yeah, what is yeah. this anime generic bullshit and then also these, like, harem sexist designs for the female characters? Uh, uh, just... I have to say, though, it had Nia. Okay, uh, whatever. Okay, she I had, had one. That, 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 that makes, a, that makes the game with... totally okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. This redeems it. No, but but it's 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 something. And okay. then she and then she uh, got a uh, sexist costume anyway. I think hers was pretty okay. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it was still unnecessary, and the way yeah. how how the protagonist gets all the girls. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's such a generic shit, and I was really like questioning my sanity playing this game. Yeah, that was a bit. I don't know what they were thinking there. I mean, I kind yeah, of it guess it, like thinking. it was such a disappointment because I actually thought like the humor in Xenoblade was really good. Like I really liked the characters yeah, and well, the, humor. the humor. And like then, then already Xenoblade X happened, and I was like, mm, kind of like it's not quite the same. Maybe with, with like, Xenoblade X, I can understand because it was an entirely different focus, also in terms of yeah, genre. Yeah, you know, like, Which, but hmm? you know, w the focus was different, but they still added jokes, and they were just yeah. shitty. Like, right, why, right, why, right. like, if it's not the focus, then why does it have to be shitty? Cynic. It's like it's just. Cynic. But consider. Tatsu but is food. No, <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not. You laugh, you're laughing. It's so funny. <laughs> God, I can't I'm sorry, like, like, yeah, I take everything here. bad. Tatsu's food is like comedy gold. Everything. Yeah, I mean, the the thing best thing that came out of Xenoblade Chronicles X clearly are mecha movement mm -hmm. yeah. and music. The music boss was good. Music uh, right, Anna? Right. Yeah. Some of it was really, really good. I That's agree. True, actually, like the field, oh. the, the field tracks were extremely good. Black tar, black tar is epic. Black tar, yes, of course. And hello, and, and we're fliegen. And we're fliegen was fliegen, also amazing. Fliegen is awesome. <laughs> yeah, the classic Savannah shit, basically. I mean, let's be um, to be honest. A lot of the, the tracks would have been better if the sound mixing was better and if it was better, uh, like balanced against the. Uh, the voice acting uh, volume or the sound effect volume because that was all over the place in that game. <laughs> Turn the light so, on. Mm. The thing with the thing about X is I would really like uh, a remake of it. Like for Switch, Switch 2, whatever. Because there is a really good game in there. But it needs like better sound mixing uh, and definitely better, better menu design. And oh yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like something, something must have ran really wrong when they really yeah. sat there and were like, "Guys, we have, we have like a 7020p maximum resolution. Yeah, let's make the menu such that it is basically meant for 2K monitor, but like 6px font size, so nobody can read it. Is that cool with you guys?" Everyone yeah, just and, it along. And also, <laughs> uh, wasn't, the, wasn't that menu missing some really important sorting functions? It was it's missing something. sorting. It it yeah. was entirely irrationally sorted. It was a little bit. Uh, to be fair, you know, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth had the same problem. Shitty menu. Just gotta mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. Everything else is great about the game, but the menu. Ugh. Uh. Um, but the menu in Xenoblade. I I feel like something must have gone wrong in development because surely it could not have been. To be fair, though, Xenoblade, the first Xenoblade, also hadn't. Didn't have that great of a menu. The, the, the yeah. re-release version, however, had a great menu. I mean, but even the first Zero Blade had a better menu, I think. Yeah, and, it also, had, yeah it had. and also it wasn't as 
as um, as bad in terms of like having so much crap that you have to that you have to order in in some way and, and that you have to like a uh, search through to find what you need. And a game like Xenoblade X really desperately needed a very good menu, and it didn't it, have one. <laughs> yeah, it needed also like some of these systems were just a little bit too too much and felt too tagged mm. on. Yeah, and especially um, like like the the, the the elemental resistances. Like, who the heck was able to like um, deal with those elemental resistances? And what was what? Because you didn't have like fire, ice, and stuff. You had like uh, positron atomic or something, some shit yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 they had their own. Never, and you never knew what was what and what the enemies were doing and what and what enemy was weak against what. It was like so un intransparent what they did there. It felt yep. almost like they were making an MMORPG, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, they were like, oh, shit, gotta do a single player experience out of that. I mean, that's how, yeah. how the game sometimes felt to me because it had so much systems upon uh, systems, you know, I mean, which is a yeah. very telltale sign of like a. Um, adding to that is that there was actually a co-op mode. You could play co-op certain certain missions and certain things. Yeah, I mean like co-op and MMO are two. Yeah, of course, of course, but, beasts, I think. but I mean, um, but I mean, it was still in there, so so you could see there as a hint that they actually actually planned something more. And you know, I'm actually I would actually be surprised if Xenoblade would never get a true full-on gacha game at some point because it kind of is is building to that. In a, if you think about it with all those characters that it has, it in might a way. it might eventually go that that route. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, like they certainly have uh, a good game uh, like nowadays. But I will say, not a lot of people remember. Right. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, so do they even have the do they even have the IP of Zeno Gears? Isn't that still with someone else, just like with Zeno Saga? Um, yeah, I feel like Zeno Saga is probably probably Sega. Sega. Yeah, yeah was it Namco. Be. Was oh, it Bandai Namco? Namco I think they, they Namco. That might be. Yeah. I think they didn't want to pay for three more games because the sales. Uh, run to their expectations. Mm. Mm. Uh, should be honest, if you don't release the game in every market, you know, maybe yeah, don't yeah. release Zeno Saga 2, a game, an RPG that, you know, works good in Europe because RPGs work in Europe and then don't really, is the only thing you release here, you know. Mm. Uh, but yeah. That was the worst of the Zeno Sagas, I think that was the worst. Okay, the yeah. Second one. <laughs> okay, I, I think that I one, that one was a slog to play, play through. Uh, by the way, I have like uh, speaking of gacha games, I have something very interesting oh, no. to show you. Oh, no. no, it's actually just uh, look in Discord. If it's if it's actually play another, um, I saw another Final Fantasy Heroes, not Final Fantasy, Fire Emblem Heroes uh, skill text jump scare. <laughs> God mm. damn it, man! That's like the skill descriptions are getting out of hand in this shitty game. <laughs> Not really the game. I mean, it's one of the better gachas. I think I just haven't played it in like three years, and whoa, whoa. Just, just out of completely out of control at this point. At some point, it's like um, you need to read those things and accept the terms before continuing, and it's kind of yeah, like yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, if you take all the skills together, you might actually reach it because that's just one skill. Yeah. <laughs> Does Alabaster Engine support dynamic lightning? I mean, to some extent, yeah, we do have dynamic shadow dropping and uh, those light things can be moved dynamically. It's not it's not really sophisticated, it's more like it's definitely shading, but... Oh, our, um, our lightning you, is could, you could have the sun move around in real time and have shadows. The yeah. sun has a, a cast shadows, but... Our lightning is so is so dynamic that it uh, that it calls every birthday the best birthday ever. <laughs> Unlike a certain very undynamic lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Which yeah. engine are you using? Our own. We made our own. It's not Impact. It's not written in Node.js. It's written in TypeScript. TypeScript. But we didn't code. Our, we didn't create our own programming language, so it's not truly our own. We could. But that takes so much time. Uh, actually, no, the creating of the language doesn't take time. Writing the compiler takes time. Mm. 
Because then you have to understand machine code, you know, and then you mm -hmm. a compiler needs to translate into a different language first and then translate that language into actual machine code. It's, it's a whole thing. I'm sure there's like enough YouTubers who have attempted and showcased how that works. You mean like you have nice right? chill cabbage in media. Hmm? Do we? Wait a second. Yeah, let me check. But it's custom, like the engine's custom, the engine's custom. Oh yeah, that's cute. Yeah, this that's is cute completely carriage. written by ourselves. Yeah. For some mm. reason, we really like doing that, apparently. Yeah, it's a nice chill cabbage. Cabbage. By the way, Felix, did, uh, did mm. you watch this one, this one uh, video that I showed you? I'm sure you did. Um... <laughs> Sure, sure, I know. The Earth Defense Pause. Oh my, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's such a classic game, man. Yeah, the, it's it's very funny when, like, it's like, oh yeah, okay, you are like some guy who defends Earth against aliens with like an army and stuff, and then you're basically a one-man army who's just a guy with some guns shooting down giant spaceships or something. Yeah. It's really problem question mark. No, no, it's really <laughs> funny. I mean, I mean that game series could never do anything wrong, like uh, right, Felix? Uh, oh, that's. It could never do anything wrong that that would annoy you or would annoy Stefan, for example. What game series? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What game? What? 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 They added no, freaking okay. VTubers. Oh. Not gonna we play like ever. A... Oh, never. oh yes, yes, that's like definitely always listen to the opinion of uh, people who have nothing to do with game dev, talking about game dev. It's always like a it. very sane thing <laughs> um, to consider. Though I, though I must say, like I, I'm actually happy that you answered Felix because, like, uh, huh? I don't like to do social media. What social media? You, you answered very adamantly. Which what, what, amicably, what? amicably, to the tweet. What tweet? Which tweet? The oh, then. Which tweet you were? No, no, I didn't. What? What? The the one like with like two years. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually by VTuber, but yeah, like there was like this this take of uh, you know when you don't release your game within two years, please don't announce it. And and I'm like, yeah, well, I mean. If we wouldn't have done that, then CrossCode wouldn't exist. I mean, that's that's just how right. it is. Uh, was that the one that I also saw? Yeah, it, it was one of those. Uh, and I'm not even sure if, if if it was really a VTuber or just some PNG tuber. Yeah, who knows? Or or a, re, or a retweeter, because I mean, everyone can just say, "Hey, I'm a VTuber now." And yeah, then Impact Jazz was also not the engine we used, guys. We we use it as a base, but like ninety nine percent of it was rewritten. Yeah. We just so. want to give credit to what we used as a base. Mm -hmm. But I just don't want to like undermine like Felix's achievement in rewriting large chunks of it. Yeah. yeah. It was um, it was quite uh, a big modification. Yeah. But also fun. I mean, we wouldn't do this if it wouldn't be fun for us. <laughs> um, uh, is the, the background, background music, uh, it's not our own. It's like something you find on SoundCloud. I can send but it here. Uh, but it is our own, uh, but it is our own playlist, right? No, it's not. Oh, no. I, I guess it is. Actual it chill VGM. <laughs> That's what it's called. I didn't name it. <sighs> no, again, it's too chill. I'm getting tired. Mm. Okay, anyway, I'm getting distracted, but at least, I mean, I did roughly connect those maps here. Let me check again. I mean, when when mapping, you can always be a little bit more distracted, I feel like. You know. Yeah, mapping is actually something you can do while talking. Especially if it's detail mapping, though. Right now, I'm actually yeah, doing detail more mapping, like... Detail mapping, yeah, for sure. Rough oh, layout one more, mapping. One more to the right, I think. One more? Let me check. One more to the right. Oh, no, I actually moved it too much. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think you have a delay. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I just want to say I probably have a delay. Yeah. I can already tell you what happens. I will move it to one too much to the right, and then I'm now I'm moving it one back. 
Yeah, that's basically like the USB stick version of mapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, perfect. I mean, now I just need to move it down a bit further, but it's fine. Why does the map look like a doggo? It looks like a doggo. Oh no. Kind of, if you see it as a... I don't see a doggo. I don't see it, no. I don't think this question was answered, but well, sorry, uh, do you guys participate in game jams? No, no, that's uh, outside of our purview. I pr personally, I never could do them because I always have bigger ideas and then it's such limited time. But we did, we did do that. Hannah Fleets and I did participate in the tower thing, right? All right, we did the game together. That's true. Right? Oh, that one. Yeah, I thought you. I thought you meant uh, Ninja Hobo Connoisseur. I mean, oh, yeah, this really... one, this one too. Then the uh, Game Boy game contest. Yeah, with Potter's Gray. Which that was another gray. one. I, I did my own thing. Yeah, that, but like, but uh, that was the first time we worked with uh, Dennis, actually. Yep. Don't yeah, and in the credits, screw 8-bit, here's the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I did my, not really a game jam, but I did create games during revision, and at least one time that's something I did. We did oh, have the, a couple RPG, of game RPG? jams. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the RPG, RPG 7 RPG. RPG, yes. That's the one. Um, which is something you can play today if you want to, which is, let me just Google it. Probably something a lot of people don't know was made. How works the program? Did you have the IDE in your editor or just using an external IDE for the logic code? Yeah. If you want to play uh, well, like a very them. short RPG, it's uh, yeah. You can play it in a browser we too. Use, we do use an editor. We use like WebStorm or something. This is PHP Storm. And then anyway. you write every code. The editor for the game that you see Felix working in, that's also written by ourselves. Which, mm. Where we use um, HTML and CSS, basically. So it's a yeah. web app, if you will. But it doesn't use React or something like that. Dennis We're will. <laughs> Dennis will be doing music for the Best of Dawn. It's still not hundred percent certain if he will do all the music though. But he will do at least some music. Um, it depends a bit on his situation. If he will have, he will be able to. Uh, spent too much time on the project, so it's a little bit uh, uncertain right now. But I mean, the music you hear so far has been done by Dennis, and there will be at least more music done by him. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. We will need to find more how can be done and now then please do release you know, but... Of course when people see something cool obviously they want to play it you know and then um, but I think nowadays more people understand like especially like um, at least from my experience, more people in our community definitely understand, you know, game dev uh, takes time. And yeah. they give us the time, you know, and it's not like there aren't many games to play in the meantime. I mean, there's just really think. too many games, to be fair. So There is a lot of games, like not, not necessarily all of them are good. <laughs> But uh, there you know, is like, like a fair amount of good games out there. Yeah, there is a, however, there, exactly, there is a fair amount of good games and a lot of good indie games these days. You know, yeah. it's, even even some of the copycats that we get um, from popular genres that like popped up are really really good. You know, they. It's always a cool thing about when someone new when something new comes along. You know, someone has a cool idea. Um, just like with roguelike, with the with like vampire survivors, for instance, and then someone else, or Slay the Spire, right? Really, the first deck builder, right? It comes along and like creates a new type of uh, genre, like roguelike deck builder, 
Mm. And then a lot of other games come along and say, hey, this is pretty cool, but what if? And add to that and, you know, was create Lazes, a new experience. Was Slay the Spire before One Step from Eden? Yes. Pretty okay, sure. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, it might be. Slay the Spire is the first roguelike deck builder. Was it really? Yeah. Really? Slay the Spire. And How old I mean, is it? Oh, 2019. Oh, yeah, okay. 2017 early access. Okay, makes sense. 2019. Damn it. It's already five years? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is time? Yeah, I don't know what do you mean? Five years since what? Since Slay the Spire was released. In yeah, I mean, it, was, it was released before Crosscode, so. After Crosscode. Sure. After? Crosscode was 2018. Is, but Slay the Spire, are you sure? Yeah, 2017 in Early Access, but 2019... Okay, I'm, then I okay. noticed the Early Access release, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, but... To but be we fair, even... you know, the game was already fully playable mm -hmm. in terms of you could go to the third act. Mm -hmm. What they added is characters. Um, certainly, but, you know, the Early Access already, like, had a lot of like content i mean like i played the early access version for 500 hours right mm. i actually played the release version much much less ah it was not the first deck building roguelike the first deck building rogue one of the first deck building roguelike games is dream quest a mobile game developed by peter whalen and released in 2014 haha -ha. right okay yeah but i uh... see i see you really wanted to prove me wrong <laughs> you did it no, I must, good job I I was actually <laughs> searching if there was actually some roguelike deck builders that were a bit more well known. I mean, it's like saying Vampire Survivors didn't create the genre because there were also some mobile games who did that thing, but no one knows about them. Like, <laughs> but uh, we can, I can actually tell you that the, the way Slate Aspire did it is unique to them. They didn't base it off that mobile game. It mm -hmm. was built from two guys, one mm -hmm. of them being a big fan of Magic the Gathering in all these games and his idea was always that wouldn't it be cool to have a deck building game like the, the fun of building a deck in magic the gathering right but without the need of another human opponent you know because those are hard to find sometime mm. and mm. He, he really liked the deck building aspect you know and so the other guy really liked the roguelike genre so they thought like let's let's do this hey, let's do I this Damn. Question by Chacha Zenri. Do you have any plans for who could do it if Dennis can't? So far, we are... No, we don't have any clear decision yet. Um, mm -hmm. Also, it's not entirely sure how much Dennis will be able to compose. So I don't want to go ahead too quickly about this. Um, Please, I'm complete new word or plan. Yeah. Alabaster Den is a complete new world, um, entirely separate from Crockett. Please, please, please don't expect us to be a ploy that we make here. It is really not connected, okay? Don't yeah. be mad at us if it's not connected in the end because the developers said something like this or that. <laughs> it's not connected, please. No, no. Yeah. We don't know anything, we are dumb. It's a fantasy world, you know, they're gods, it's magic. That kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. By the way, thanks also, for... Thanks for the subscription. Uh, ha, I bet I beat you, I beat you. Thanks to Maliko LP, ha, but I said the name first, for the subscription. Especially with Prime, because subscribing with Prime... You win this time. Yes. That's how it rhymes. It also doesn't cost you money. But we still get some money. It's like magic. <laughs> I mean, Hachu! Jeez. Uh... Pascaro. Is that dynamic UI map? Uh, you mean like the overview map? That's not... Uh, not fully dynamic. Like you need to... When you go into the menu, you need to like... Press right click, update the map, and then it like updates the map. To the new look and feel, mm. but it is the like height map representation of the maps 
bound together. Yep, yep. Uh, by the way, I have to do an idle meeting real quick. What? <clears throat> okay. No, I'm just gonna Did go. Did Minecraft create a block game generator? De de probably popularized. It? Yeah, popularized yes, definitely. I mean, you have to remember <laughs> that that Minecraft is based on Infinity Miner, for example. Uh, thanks so to Malik LP for the subscription, by the way. Before forgetting. We said that uh, earlier. <laughs> Hen and I actually had a fight about it. Oh, ben really? I'm a that slow. Jeez. <laughs> It's I think something. I I think I just heard the sound, so I'm really confused. Okay. Oh, all right. We'll just we we'll just live in the future, you know. I guess. That's more than fine. Oh, am I all for original ideas? Uh, cross code ending was a bit anticlimactic. Play the DLC. I still think it is. It is. It's uh, like, you know, like. To be fair, like I, I sort of pushed a little bit for not having a too, like over the top ending. Like just like Felix said, I also personally would like it if you don't just kill God and end realities in every uh, JRPG. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like fi things are like left open and like the overall world is not suddenly happy after you solve. You know, it's not a Disney movie. Mm. Yeah, it was in the in the time I watched a lot of like Korean movies, and I really like how they leave things open, and also like Souls games, of course, mm. which are always like up to, for interpretation. Yeah, to some extent. I mean, and to me, that's Jeff that's a little bit of a yeah. Um, if you do too much of leaving things open, I. I'm always a little bit concerned of, well, you don't need to plan things as thoroughly if you leave too much open, because then you can just say, oh, you need to figure this out on your own. So, like, it's a lot easier to cover up plot, plot holes like that. Um, so I kind of often feel like it's less of an achievement, in my opinion, if you make, make very abstract stories. I mean, Signalis to some extent had this. Signalis had, like, some, I don't know, like, kind of a really cool story but a lot of things were really abstract and weird and it's up to your interpretation and i think people actually came up with some really cool interpretations just that you know the game doesn't tell you which one is right or not and it kind of feels you know like maybe that's like it's probably just a personal opinion but i just think like okay like they could have just do, done something and say, okay, that's it. And now people can do the rest, essentially. They can just write the story, like finish, finish the final thing and see if it all makes sense. Hmm. So, yeah, you know, like you can, obviously you can find a nice balance. And to be fair, I mean, in CrossCop, we kind of did that towards the end and said, okay, like, let's leave a few things open and... Um, I'm not sure if that was the best choice, to be fair, and that's why for the DSC we made everything pretty much 100% clear about mm -hmm. how things was totally planned from the very beginning, yes. Mm -hmm. um, because many people, uh, we, we must have done a good job because a lot of people thought that, that, that the DLC was planned before we finished the original game, which we did not. No, <laughs> honestly. We yeah, it's like, we changed a few details. I'm not sure if you ever talked about that, but yeah. No, we, we like it. We, we really thought, thought a lot about how we could, like, end up, um, like, the whole Citron uh, situation. I think I, we, were, we were sitting in, in call and we were discussing how we, how certain things would work with Citron, right? Yeah. I remember I was really <laughs> scared about my idea, because I thought, like, this is probably too crazy, right? <laughs> mm. But then it sort of solved a lot, mm. uh, a lot of things for us. Will Tech Thirteen be your partner for release again, or will you publish the game self? I mean, it's not really decided right now. Mm -hmm. um, we actually talked with, um, with several publishers at Gamescom, including Deck Thirteen, obviously. Um, but we still, like, we, we just have to see 
which uh which part which uh, makes sense for us um and all that but yeah you have learned your lesson have free dlcs already mapped out yeah absolutely we have so, mm. so much stuff planned out uh, though we have it, the story with a nice arc and every planned out like we do have a writer right like this mm. should not be kind of like we we have mentioned this a couple of times we also have him in in the press kit right we do yeah yeah Wait. so we we have a we have a writer who like helped so much like uh he writes down everything wow. um i think i just removed the map here could that be Dang. um press control z no i think okay. i mm, i can't map oh i mean yeah if if anything goes wrong just re-add uh, um, let me just restart reload the world map oh man i hope i didn't break anything uh, but yeah. yeah, that that whole thing helped us a lot in in like making everything more round and everything is planned out, like the entire arc. Oh wow, you get raids. Hey, hello, hello everyone. Hello. Okay. Two radical Twitch games. We're pretty chill, actually. We're not that radical. Hmm, that's true. Okay, somehow all the mess were moved down here. I don't know how that happened. Maybe that was me, accidentally. I hope it was just that. Okay. All the maps are still in yeah, here. Yeah, if you, if you accidentally remove money, I, you can't add the same map twice, so... Yeah, just because the maps are all just stuck down here. And I don't know how that happened. Well, that is weird. Yeah. Okay. Let's hope I, I just did this accidentally sometime. Anyway, thanks to all the people rating us here. Uh, hello, we are working on uh, Alabaster Dawn, which was previously known as Project Terra, and uh, I'm just restructuring some map stuff. That's what I'm doing right now. And now comes the bigger map here, which will be a filler map between these parts here. Um, so this will be interesting. So first I'm going to modify this one. Because I don't want to have this room here. I'm going to have to remove some stuff here. It's, uh, it's a little bit hard to avoid that. But I think it's necessary to do that. If I want to make the structure less blocky. Mm. So... That's okay. Like that's just how how it is sometimes. Yep. Cries in Vincent. No, that one is actually uh, Isabella. She did that one. Sorry, Isabella. Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cries in hell. Cries. <laughs> oh <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. That, that that makes sense. Good evening, I'm sorry to hear about the announcement, looking forward to it. Thanks, 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 thanks. Do you keep all the cap member or a single rep repo? I mean, like, the, the game data is in a, uh, securely kept, yes, sec very securely kept uh, repository. Oh. Yes, yeah, that's a single repository, but it's, uh, well... There are multiple branches and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, and it's like, it's good, you know. we only use mostly one. <laughs> Though sometimes when there's like a rewrite of a feature, then... Do I have to say it? For this one? For Terra, I so... I don't need to call that anymore. For well, the best of them, um, I haven't done one so far. You haven't I what? I never did a separate branch so far. No, me neither. Yeah, I mean, well, I did sometimes and Flora did, but yeah. Yeah, Flora did a few times, but... We never really needed to make one. A hey, thank it, Sprosky, for that rhyme subroni. Thank you. But that makes us bad programmers mm -hmm. because we don't use branches for everything. Yeah, yeah. Um. 
Yeah, it's a like code-wise, it's really easy to keep track of because like most of us have separate things they work on. And even then, you know, there's like merge. If something is really uh, in conflict, since mm -hmm. our map data is also in plain JSON, even when we have map, map conflicts, you can sometimes just resolve them via merge. Hmm. Just pretty nice. Pretty nice. Have you kept the name Alabaster on secret for a long time? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it has been around at least for... Uh, let me check. I think probably two years. Yeah, I think two years. It has been... I mean, like, it, it, it was... for Two years ago, it wasn't, like, set in stone. But... No. But, like, set in stone, I would say probably for a year, yeah. Actually, maybe, maybe you can check Alabaster yeah, Dawn. Maybe URL. don't show any document. Um... Oh yeah, that was the first time when we said like let's let's uh, let's quickly grab the the, the URL has been around. Uh, okay, domain checker. Um, who is maybe maybe it says some. Um, yeah, please don't like if you want to shorten Alabasterdon, try to not use ad because that is short for ad, you know and. Yeah, that 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 is unfortunately not a good thing. Yeah, you cannot really you cannot really see when it was. Oh no, actually here. Wow. Yeah. Over two years, it was. It okay. happened in June 2022. In June 20, that's when you when. That's when, when, when I registered it, and that yeah, was yeah. already. I mean, it was even some time after we started discussing that name. So yeah, that has been around for a long time. Yeah. We really wanted to wait it out <laughs> and I mean honest to be fair at some point I thought okay maybe you can announce it but then I got this kind of idea like somebody told me that might be a good idea to make this combine this with a big announcement and everything and I thought okay you know maybe not a bad idea. Um, and then we first had to prepare a big announcement before we could announce stuff so. It's a good name. I like it very much. I'm sure I'm sure you do. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, I might have pushed hard for this name. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. It's fine. I mean, it's at least uh, it's not called Zero Trigger now, so. <laughs> that was that was that's something we can say. There was zero trigger in as as a name idea, not because it had any special meaning. You know, that was the main that was the main thing why we didn't took it. It didn't really fit. Yeah, the, like it didn't look like it doesn't sound too sci-fi esque. That was like yeah, the it's issue. like sci-fi esque. Yeah, it just sounded cool and was funny because we had cross code and then our second game would be zero trigger and then if you put them together you had like cross trigger you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like you know like chrono cross and chrono trigger yeah 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 <laughs> yeah just it also sounded it's, it was one one of the things where i thought like hey yo this this sounds pretty cool hey hello kapu what's up kapu is a good friend hmm so that I actually met just a few weeks ago. Okay. Thankfully, no ice physics in the first dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> we learned that lesson. So now I have to create the room, room two B. Two B? Oh, not two B. Okay. Um. Let's make a new room. <laughs> Alabaster on short. Alan. Alan. <laughs> Alan is nice. I like this. Alan. Just, just Alan. I gotta, I gotta try to always call this Alan.
<clears throat> Seeing as CC is the average for closed caption and not just cross code, nothing new with AD. Yeah, the problem is if you put AD on the internet, ad blockers will see this and block it. You know? Yeah, they tend to do that. <laughs> so I need to be careful with, with that. Um. Then they build an underwater dungeon instead. This is not an underwater dungeon. Thankfully. And, and we had one in CrossCode, technically. I think that was actually the, the idea that we put forth. Hey, let's make an underwater dungeon, but it's basically just underwater. You know? Just a dungeon. You don't have to go underwater. Mm. Because, like, avatars couldn't uh, go underwater. Mm -hmm. These goddamn pesky alabaster dawn blockers. <laughs> uh, do you release an early demo for the game? Yes. Yeah, as as uh, Ron Cat said, um, early next year we were planning to release a demo. Maybe likely with early. like one of those mm. Steam Next Fest. Yeah, honestly, you know? I was thinking like it might make sense to do this with the Steam Next Fest. So yeah, that that's at least a target idea here. So. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Basically, the the, the build that we're um, that the Gamescom will get, so that you can also play it, right? Gamescom build is very very short. I was actually more like thinking releasing something closer to the vertical slice. Oh, um, all right. We can also do that. Because I mean, honestly, is does it really make sense to make a very short demo if you want to really get some good feedback? Uh, it doesn't make sense to have like a huge demo um, at Gamescom because people need to play it at a booth and shouldn't take too long. Otherwise, nobody will be able to play the game except for a few people. But, you know, for Steam, I think it can be a long demo. You know, like the back the demo we did in CrossCode before we stripped it down and made it shorter. Mm, um, yeah. Back then it also had like... Um, you could explore. Um, yeah, you had this like dungeon mode, exploration mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, these kind of things. Yeah. In this time, we can make. Uh, we don't. You don't have to switch between those. Like we can put both of them at the same time. We actually made sure that this time, like the tutorial is like put into the world and it makes sense. I think actually it worked out really great. Um, the, did we do like the uh, the tutorial area is like part of the main area, you know? Hmm. Oopala, sorry. I mean, yeah, it, it, the game will very likely be Steam Deck compatible just by virtue of fully have a full full controller support. Hmm. It's something we always take care of, like, but really try to make it work for both mouse and keyboard players and um, controller players. Mm -hmm. Dungeon mode, puzzle mode, free room mode, GTA mode, you name it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for the early access, we have also something planned. I hope we can at least do that. That would be nice. Mm hmm. Yeah, so you can die comfortably <laughs> in that a lot. <laughs> exactly. Though I don't hope that, like, the, uh,. Like, you can play really fast in this game as well, but you can also, like, take it slower. Like, I like to think there's more, um, more like a weighty feel to everything. Hmm. I actually really like how the combat, um, uh, feels. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, me too. I, I did get some feedback from some of the publishers I sent the build to. Yeah. And uh, so far, the feedback has been very good. So, I think um, 
Um, we think we're going in a good direction. Like, uh, I also like to comment a lot, especially whenever I play Crosscode again, I notice like how how much more things are actually polished <laughs> in uh Oh yeah, like... On. Like, um, things are a lot, you know, things are more weighty. Um, I have more impact when you hit stuff. Um, there's still like some weapons which are also still very fast, but not everything. So that that's a bit of a difference. I like um, those animations. And yeah. you and you still Oof. you still you are still somewhat slower in quotation marks because um, you sometimes want to have a certain attack rhythm which actually cre increases damage. So it also makes the combat feel more weighty. I think. Mm. Yeah, like just the adding of delay attacks, right? Like mm -hmm. you have to wait a short moment and then go back in. Yeah, it, it definitely does uh, feel pretty good. Like the like the polish on the parry is is insane. Like feels so visceral when you land one. Yeah, uh, yeah, the parry is yeah, yeah. That was that was worth it to polish that one. Like even even if uh, we even have now an effect when you um, do a perfect dodge, like you will actually see it on your on your headgear when you do one, mm. which I really really like. Mm -hmm. True, true. City was hack and slash. I wouldn't hold it against. Uh, if it wasn't hate, uh, really. uh, but AD looks satisfying. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it does. It takes like a, also like a good like a lot of ideas from Crosscode for for sure. Like which game? Um, Alabasterdon. Oh, nah. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, like there are some some ideas like the the also the addition of um, the. Uh, Legally distinct, uh, unstable face enemies can have, where you do increased break damage bar damage. Yeah, that totally didn't happen because I was playing Rebirth. <laughs> <laughs> totally not. Honestly, that I mean that's one of the things that really impressed me about uh, Rebirth, about how much strategy they added to combat, even though a lot of it was just basic simple things and honestly Crossgod had that a lot too and initially some of the early enemies in in Alabaster Dawn we kind of like want to keep things simple but I think we may have overdone it a little bit like they're they're simple but there's also like no there was essentially too little strategy and though I thought you know we can't just add the strategy, like, we can make it in a way that it's not mandatory so people can just bash their way through, but if people figure it out and use it, it just feels better, so why not do that? And then I added, like, a little bit... Honestly, I didn't do much, I mostly just added those arrows, And but I'm actually a bit fan of those arrows, personally, because it's just a, a basic thing, and as soon as you learn that, you know, okay, now whenever I see those arrows, I need to somehow hit it with the right thing. And I think it's a very easy way to communicate, um, like, temporary vulnerability and all that. But yeah. That's also something we have to see how that plays out in practice. Yep. Uh, by the way, how long do you want to, s to stream? Until midnight. No, actually I should stop uh, in, in... Sometime soon-ish. I think, but I'm actually kind of making some good progress right now, so progress I want to stream? a little bit. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm actually mapping out those maps. I mean, I did, I did, I do the thing. Actually, I actually have like a, a cool idea, if you know the structure. Like, I will make a puzzle where you need to go here to this map. Like, this would be a very big map that connects with uh, one, two, three, four, five doors. And you can actually just go here, hit a switch and do nothing else. But you need to hit the switch in order to get a chest. So and then later ah. when you go here, you need to have hit the switch in order to get the chest and all that. So I will do that in a dungeon. I yes. mean, uh, by the way, uh, have mm. you already um, have you already talked about how a certain so a certain blast from the past game has heavily inspired your 
New Ideas for Dungeon Design. <lacht> ja, Seeker of Mana a little bit. Ja, yeah, ja, yeah. I mean, um, we might have talked about, talked about it before, but we are currently, like, once every every few weeks uh, playing a bit of Secret of Mana. Yeah, with, I mentioned like, that before, friend. actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, with, like, another friend from the office. And uh, we are almost at the end. Mm. And we are currently... <laughs> Man, I don't, I didn't remember that this one of the last dungeons being such a... Such a time, such a pain. Time, yeah. yeah, such a pain. So big and so, so hard to get through, especially if you don't have a have the game uh, game guide that you had back then. It's like man. <laughs> yeah, like the dungeons were quite huge, and especially I noticed how the dungeons in in Seeker of Manor, even though there was like almost no puzzling, there were always like structures in. Sometimes quite confusing ways, but then that's kind of when I realized, you know, you can't just do weird stuff like that to kind of mix up, uh, mm -hmm. to make the dungeons feel less linear. And um, I, I can't, some, I, somehow, I somehow felt like um, things could have been made a bit better in CrossCode in that regard. So that's, that's a little bit what I'm trying to do here. The idea is... Um, a white dungeon structure where it's just go from one room to one room to another room um, and you always have essentially high intensity stuff so you either solve like a puzzle which is high intensity thinking or you have a scripted encounter that traps you which is more like high intensity fighting you know and that's i think that may be one of the issues with cross code and why the dungeons tend to be so exhausting you actually get from high intensity situation to the next high intensity situation mm -hmm. and um the dungeons had very little padding in cross code and but padding might actually be a good thing to kind of like uh, give people like a small breather and um give players a little bit of an opportunity to go around and explore stuff and um have weird connections that so people have something to explore in dungeons and all that and i'm trying to do that a bit more in project era so that that's my goal now um and uh, that's one of the things we kind of like just missed to do in the first dungeon that's why i'm trying to add this now that's mm -hmm. why i'm adding more rooms but those rooms will not be huge time wasters because there will be Mostly padding, actually. Yeah. Yes. And all of that is because we played Secret of Mana. Yeah. Which has the best no. dungeons of all time. Watch you! <coughs> right. Uh, speaking of, speaking of, uh, games, games, games. Guess what, uh, guess what kind of game I played recently? A game? Yes. A get gacha game? Yes, I played I played Ark Knights and Limbus Company. How did you know? But actually, uh, I also played the Visions of Mana demo. Oh, oh yeah, me too, me too. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's solid. I mean, it feels a bit floaty at times. Like sometimes you feel like you don't have the control that you should have, but it's also not very difficult. But I mean, overall, it's it feels very solid. Like a bit of an extension of what they did with the Trials of Mana remake, which is good. I am a bit annoyed with the design of the two main characters, like the main guy and the escort lady that you have to escort around. They have like weird faces, in my opinion. But otherwise, it feels okay. It's it's all right. What do you think, Stefan? I didn't play it. Um. It suffers from the same problem that Star Ocean, the newer Star Ocean suffers. Your party mm -hmm. members will just spam and spam and talk and talk. And so it feels very chaotic to fight. Uh. And I, I wish I could fight more, but my party members just fight and then like destroy everything. Uh, which can be good for casual gaming. I just wish I could like tell them to let, let me do the talking, you know, heal me, buff me or anything, but... I think you can. I think you could uh, um, put up the strategy for them to be... Low. I think the, the strategy menus for them were actually pretty extensive. And that you maybe, could maybe, but like for, for first impression, I feel like dang, it's a little bit... I can mm. already see it that the, the, the devs probably plan around that, that that should be the default. Mm. So I'm, I'm like... 
looking at it a little bit like that. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it's a very Unreal Engine game. <laughs> uh, so you yeah, definitely that's... immediately know, oh, this is Unreal Engine lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they did <laughs> you know not what like... I... You the know cut what scenes, The hmm? cutscenes are very... were a little bit, like, weird in mm -hmm. how, like... You, you, mm. in, in the scene, in this demo, you, you go to a, basically, um, to like a, there's like a snow region, I think, right? And then you're out of the snow region in like a field, mm. and you go to this character, which feels like it's an important character to another character that you, that's in your party, mm. but then that character is just like, oh, it's you. Here's a flute for my, uh, for, for my horses. You can take those horses. Have what fun horses? with those horses. Wolves. They are I wolves. mean, like, whatever they are, you know. Yeah, yeah. They, they are, are basically wolves. wolves. Um, Good boys. Uh, though I have to say, that character, that cat boy, um, holy un un unfitting voice, in my opinion. Mm, yeah, I can see. Very cool combat. He uses. Yeah, he, yeah. He has, like, two daggers and a third dagger on his tail. Mm -hmm. Which is very funny. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I also played him for, for most of the time because he was just the most fun to play. And and, and that's something nice. Uh, the characters really played um, felt very different in how they played. And they also have different weapons that also made them feel somewhat different. Um, I think the... But I don't think the party members were that big of a problem, I think, in terms of doing too much. Like, and also, there is a big advantage, you only have two of them. So it's not like in Star Ocean, where you have like, like seven, I think, in the later game. <laughs> which, uh, yeah, who, which, uh, whose idea was that, to give someone in an action RPG, like, seven party members? <laughs> the guy that makes him just wants to stop making Star Ocean game. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I mean, like, they did, please... right? Square Enix, please stop giving us money to do this. Let us do anything. Uh, with this. Imp implying they get money to do that. I mean, <laughs> the budget of those games. <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, like the Star Ocean games suffer from such a low budget, man. The cutscenes are all very clearly like uh, not like uh, adjusted, like the mm. motion and everything. Everyone, everyone is also like a VTuber in that game because everyone's floaty. Every part of okay. their body is constantly mm. floating. <laughs> uh, which is obviously very realistic. Like we all know, that's how. how I mean, it's the ocean. The, that means they're in space or something. I guess. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of it's course. a different planet. Gravity works differently on that planet. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's um, like, but but they had like the very very high high priority feature of uh, character emotes for some reason in a single. Yeah, that, that when I saw that in the latest game, I was like, why do I have character emotes? In the single player game that has no multiplayer features. Yeah, like. Who am I going to show these? Like, who am I emoting to? Like, it's, it's not like, your party members don't even react to it. It's not like like it, it does anything. Like, so so weird of a decision. I mean, and maybe, then also yeah. the UI has tiny fonts. Okay, yeah, great. I was playing it on my TV on the PlayStation Five, and I was like, uh, is mm. this made for ants? Mm. Like, it's a 4K display. Come on, guys, please. Uh, another thing that that. Um, you said about Visions of Mana, this is such an unreal game. Uh, you know what I loved? I loved how you uh, have like, when you run, you have your automatic jumping over things feature, right? When, when you run towards uh, fence, the characters jump over it in a very, <laughs> very over the top way in some cases. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that can even happen when you run over giant, uh, over like tiny rocks, you run something. To, to, to a rock that is like comparable to our small rocks, like rocks that are basically up, go up to your chin or something. And then your character, when you run to it in a very perfect way, it does like this <laughs> jump slide over the object animation over this like chin, chin high tiny rock. And I'm like, wow, great. That's very necessary. Uh, cappuccino uh, flag art is a uh, cappuccino flag ask if there's any plans for cabbage plushies um maybe i mean i can definitely see maybe i mean there's actually this kind of service who tries to design uh, plushies from game characters and make this kind of crowdfunding thing and we could try to do it like that way because that seems rather easy to do because you don't have to do so much 
like um, they kind of like handle shipping, producing and sell and you just get a share. So it wouldn't be a lot of profit for us, but people could get plushies. So that would be one way to do it. Mm hmm. Yeah. I want the plushies, so we're going to do one. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Yep, yep, yep. That's how it works. That's how it works. Suppose at least there aren't side vaulting over air on the tiny rocks. No, I feel I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like a fun little JRPG to play. You know, mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. hope they don't like um, end up just doing it like the po like the 3D version of um, Secret of Mana 2 or Zeichen like, Densetsu 3 was. You mean um, five? Because, yeah, trials. Because like that was, they really just put in the same. Uh, cutscenes like those bare bones cutscenes that worked in 2D, you know. Mm, yeah, in 3D, true. they just it was so flat, everything was so flat and basic, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. also, yeah, that and also, um, something that Visions did much better uh, the voice acting in Trials in the Trials remake was very unprofessional for the most part. They had like two, two uh, well known voice actors that were obviously no, that obviously knew what they're doing. And the others range from, yeah, okay, and okay, you just took an office worker there. <laughs> Not, like, this one fire spirit, for example, was like, <clears throat> uh, not good, and also uh, recorded through a telephone, it felt, or something, I don't know. <laughs> but the, the, the Vision's voice actors were, I mean, I wouldn't say good. I mean, they were okay, they were good voice actors. It's just that the script that they had was not always great because uh, the main character is such a typical uh, good boy hero <laughs> man that it's like not much to get out of that one, I think. But the dragon girl is cute. She's a cute Tsundera kind of girl and that's, that's nice. <laughs> very unique. Never yeah, very unique. Before. I have never seen one. All right, um, should we wrap it up for today? Yo, 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 we're doing Alabaster Dawn. That's... Yo, um, yo, yo, we rap, voice snake rap dog. With w, with a w. Rap with a W. How do you... Rap. I don't know how rap? to say that. You mean like the food? And then finish the stream. No, no, rap it. Yo, 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 B-Boy Snake Dog. G, gotta listen up. We just got a subscription by BL Fork. Oh no, we are no, getting raided. No, Deke! No, don't do this to me! Deke! <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm like, how about we end the stream? Deke no. rates us with 66... Uh, you thought you could do this? Subscribe with 66 Ooh. and then... Uh, black but, and follows in... Just 200 people. Hi. Hi, everyone. But, but first, <laughs> Hi, we have everyone. to pay respect to, B to BL4, 34 who says... Yes. Ah, those the Alabaster Dawn, all caps, devs. Congrats, in my opinion. One of the first of many, many more steps to full release, Raptor Pock. <laughs> or, yes. or rather, Komodo Hype. Looking forward to re to future regular streams, am I right? Kappa, yeah, actually. yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yes. Hey, everyone. Hello. You also, see? Hey, hello. Hey, hello. hey I, Robin. I, Robin, also for, for Doggers. And also, welcome. To that furry VTuber who do, do does VTubing streams. Who's this also, man? Who is this man? Thank you so much, Deke. Alabasta looks so good. Congrats on you. Thank you, Deke. Or oh, is it Deke? Yeah. Oh, no, no. It, by the way, um, it, it has been a long time since we last had like 330 almost. Yeah, yeah, it's because somebody just raided us with 200 people. So I give, but go now figure. It's thinking quickly. It's thinking quickly. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I, I was just talking about, yeah, you know, like, I'm getting tired. Let's wrap up the stream and then, pff, yeah, yeah. people raid us. Well, ah, I guess I can. A, also, good point. A bit of Baileys. Please upload the word Phoenix. Yes, I should redo that again. Anyway. I like the last 10 words or something that I know just lost media. Lost media? Oh, no. What mm. can you do? Look, we have a parallax. We. Parallaxen. Parallaxen. It's such good entertainment that we do the stream. 
Yeah. <laughs> you need to understand. Well, I need to. I usually get up between six and eight o'clock in the morning, and it's hard to to do that if you go to bed at midnight. So. Um, Where's that Jack, Jack Roscoe Moran, Moran guy? Right? Good question. I haven't seen him around today. Maybe he already uh, renamed himself to Jalabasta Morant. Yeah. Oh, Morant. Jalabasta <laughs> Morant. This actually yeah, yeah. goes goes nice. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to back or support this game? Not yet, but you can subscribe to our Twitch channel. <laughs> I mean, one thing you can do is definitely wishlist on Steam. That always helps. Yeah, that so helps maybe, lot, yeah. maybe we can uh, quickly link that here. Maybe we should, we should update our Twitch uh, about to include. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Did we do that? Probably not. Felix, you forgot it right. You can now get cross crossbow yeah. on stream. <laughs> maybe you should. Maybe, maybe you we should, should add that. Add. And maybe you should also add like all the social media things, Felix. Oh on my. Twitch. Not today. Not today, no. Hi, Robin. Just make sure you arrive uh, on. Friday, not too late. Um, though the thing is, this time our booth uh, things will be di be a bit different because we have two mm -hmm. stations where people can play games. Unfortunately, there's like five games. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, but the good thing is that those two stations will be there the whole weekend, and we might not be around, but you might still be able to play Alabaster Dawn, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> even if you're not around. So that's that's a I good thing. This is also true. You can also buy CrossCode to support us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, true. sure, you can do that, <laughs> and that works also. You can all, and you can but also. But the wish list is a big, is a big, that's yeah. a goaded move. So it's yeah, goaded move. It's very goaded <laughs> and and support build. Yeah, like <laughs> on, on on God, no skibbity. <laughs> <laughs> no skibbity. You're basically pay, paying that. That. <laughs> Fish tuck text or whatever you say, the people say. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it's very oh. aura of you. I think I that. think think we're just getting older and older as you continue speaking this no, way. We are, no, one is getting older and older, Felix. I just recently realized. Yeah. That you don't get older until you are suddenly forty-four. Then you get older all of a sudden. Oh my gosh! I have four years left or a bit more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Um, but, I, but I get Project Terra, uh, not Project Terra, Alabaster Dawn ready until then. By the way, have you realized, Felix, have you realized that we've been listening to pretty yeah. neat music for the last hour or so? No. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sweet YouTuber music, Anna. Okay, yeah. it's too bad you're not around, uh, Deke. Uh, I can understand, though. I mean, it's, uh, it's oh, uh, cra uh, Gamescom can be exhausting. And I will yeah, be yeah, running around a lot this time, so it might be... Yeah. Especially exhausting for me this time, I think. Remember to um, drink, have always a water bottle with you, Felix. Yeah, I will make sure to have one. The thing is, I mean, hopefully we will have a backstage thing again where we have free drinks. Yeah, yeah, we should do that. Hopefully. That was really a godsend last time. <laughs> the perks of being a developer. You can go, you can go into the... Mm. To the area where not as many people are. That's true, that's true. I'm past the 44 H point. I can confirm bits of you or do start breaking down or no. I guess no, that's but, uh, is. In, in in all seriousness, I have I have read like a headline. I couldn't read the article because paywalled where someone was was talking about it's that aging happens happens in like waves and one of the bigger waves starts at forty four or something. And oh, the next no. one is at is at sixty seven or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm pr pretty sure it's exactly this year for yeah, every exactly person that. in it's the just, world. Just like when you when you become eighteen, you are suddenly so such an. You know, it's man. the same. Yeah. Like people say, you know, when you have uh, babies, you know, they also grow in births. Like the, like the certain moments where they're um, growing a lot and um then they change and they're very troublesome and they make like calendars and it doesn't fit at all you know like every they also say you know there's this calendar but also every baby is different and you know don't listen to this calendar but here's this calendar and it's like yeah. okay so should i listen to this Mixed. calendar or not and in practice Mixed. you know Mixed. 
every every baby seems to be unique and you, you like people are just trying to force a pattern on things as they always do and mm. the, the, the the reality is that uh reality is just too noisy and chaotic for patterns to work um, yes, sure. um uh, medium manage asked there was a post on twitter where he asked don't review a game if it uh, asked the guys if it was fun. Uh, it's yeah, nonsense yeah. <laughs> basically i mean it's, there shouldn't you releasing a game uh, um, revealing a game that needs two more years to release i mean first of all you never really know if you will make it in the two years even if you say it <laughs> that it takes two years and also i mean it depends on your project how you finance it what kind of hype you want to build up if you want to do early access that kind i of mean stuff. there is developers who can do that if you are fine with developing your game for a very very long time by yourself in the dark and then you can quickly go to a full release then this works but i mean crosscode our crosscode was an example of a game that we had to release uh, like we take we took like the opposite approach we just we were very tr transparent about the development you could already play crosscode demos like years before it started early access like one year after the project started there was a demo on the internet so you could play crosscode for six years at least until it was finally it finally came out um, so we are like the exactly the opposite of this and it worked well for us and honestly most people were fine with us delaying the game that often and being very transparent with that so i, I just don't agree with that i mean i can't understand if people are very hyped about a game and um then they have to wait forever that this is um that this might be annoying to a lot of people but for us it's just about the reality that if you don't do that we will not be able to successfully finish the game so because at some point at least for project terror i think at some point we do need to go early access in order to really finish this game in the best way possible um, so that's why we need to this longer time uh, between announcement and release. Yeah, also not to forget that um, we're making RPGs, right? We're making RPG, but we're still a, a, like, relatively speaking, small team for that um, RPG. Yeah, um, yeah. Creating the, this content for an RPG and like putting it to a quality that we think is like acceptable just takes time There's, it's not a, it's not a thing that we're lazy or anything you know it's it's a typical thing where you say like nine women can't produce a baby in one month you know it's just something yeah. which takes time where we sometimes you need to it reiterate over a cutscene you know we have a lot of great tools to make this easier nowadays um but this unfortunately comes with the <laughs> with the bonus of giving us more options and then we want to make it even better yeah, um, that's a bit of the curse we experience with Alabaster Dawn, why things take longer. Like, uh, we have better tools, those tools allow us to place more props more easily. So what do we do? We do place more props in the map and fill them with more details compared to crosscode. And suddenly creating maps takes longer. It's kind of like these, these things happen. And um, I mean, we are kind of like in the situation where we are a very small team making really, really ambitious and tricky games to develop. So, and uh, that's why we need this kind of approach of uh, announcing our games early and working on them for a long time. So that that's that's just the way how we do things. That's the way we do it. I feel like it works fine. Like it's, it's, um... No. Like it, like you guys make the game also better, you know, by uh, providing feedback. Like it's just darn impossible for us to find every single little bug, you know, hmm. because we're obviously developers. We play the game in a certain way, in what we expect to play or like what we think it should turn out, and then like a <laughs> like. Some player will just randomly do something really crazy that we never thought of, and you know that helps a lot. Mm. Creating maps seems to be looking like a peaceful part of the thing. It <laughs> is, but it's also a long, like it takes time. 
it's busy work. It's like it's a lot of busy work. work. Yeah. I mean, to some extent, yeah, it is. It is like. Um, I mean, to be fair, like uh, designing the layout, like the thing I'm currently doing, I only sketched out this room. Now actually coming up with the actual design and making the puzzle, like a, it's a bit different. But once you have like the rough layout and just making things look pretty, that one is a bit like it's time intensive, but it's like uh, something you can do while listening to stuff. For instance, you can go into an automatic mode at some point. Yeah, it's a bit like drawing in that sense, that's true. Anyway, I mean, even though we do did get this right now, I'm, I really think I need to wrap up the stream. <laughs> you, um, yeah. So I'm so sorry we haven't been doing that much now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's getting pretty late for me, so... Oh, me too. Weird. Yeah. And yeah, tomorrow, yeah. The day after tomorrow, we will be off to Gamescom. So if anybody is at Gamescom, uh, maybe we can meet then. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. So our booth is close to the Indie Arena. I think you wrote the the location in our blog post, in case you didn't see that. So if you want to, uh, if you want to visit us, Gamescom, uh, Gamescom booth, etc., is here in this blog post. Just scroll down a little bit. It's uh, down mm -hmm. here at Gamescom. Hole 10-2. That's a number. It is indeed a number. Mm -hmm. It is. That's yeah. Okay, yeah, I just I just really hope things will work out with the two PlayStation. It's like it's really it's it's really unfortunate that there's so many developers from Zaland and they're just sharing two two stations where they can play. And I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that uh, there might be a lot of Alabastodon people, like people who want I mean, to play Alabastodon. And uh, is, at, at least one of the developers also has a separate booth somewhere else. What um, do they? Yeah, uh, the ones, the, the people from Yarn Guardians have like a separate booth. They have a separate like, booth? Yeah, with some other uh, partnership they have. I, I don't oh. remember what it was, but they do. Uh, oh, I didn't me, know that. Okay, that, that's told good. That, told me that on Friday or something. That's good at least. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, I hope that people, some other, some of the other people will also get their games played there. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe I'm estimating this wrong, and maybe there's not going to be so many people. Who knows? Games come as huge anyway, so. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, um, I guess it's time to wrap up the stream. Yeah, yeah, but first. But first. Okay. But. okay we can end now. The Seinfeld theme is playing. Allegedly. It's a weird Seinfeld it's theme again. It's a weird again. Seinfeld theme from SoundCloud. Anyway, goodbye, everyone. Eat your greens. And Eat your don't greens. forget to brush your teeth. Yes, In don't. And don't forget to brush all those places that you don't reach. Otherwise. Und nicht vom Beckenrand springen. That's very Und nicht das Wasser trinken, da ist viel Chlor drin. Yes, don't don't drink that. Anyway, um thanks everybody for watching the stream. Um so our very first Alabaster Dawn game Day stream and hopefully there will be more streams. Um I was watching the whole time. That's very cry great for you. Um not for you. Fiora. 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 That's the name. Okay. Not good enough. Okay, yeah, not good enough, I know. Oh, by the um, way, um, uh, um, thanks to Deke for, for rating us, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. We still have okay. that sound, yeah. Yes, we do. We don't have a sound, anyway. but we still have the sound in Discord. Seinfeld theme is over, us, quote unquote. So, right, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, until next time, uh, wishlist De La Besta on Steam if you have time and didn't do so. Yet. So anyway, yep. until then, bye bye. 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 Felix, you must die here and now. Yeah, 